Man. Bonjour, friends. Grab your poutine to go, boys, and get strapped in with some genuine Saskatchewan seal skin bindings. Because we are going on one brutal fucking bumpy road trip, eh? That's right, friends. Murder Metal Mayhem is heading back up north to Canada, eh? <laughs> Spreading faster than a case of the clap in a trailer court. Able to shatter eardrums within a 666-mile radius. A podcast more brutal than all the rest. It's Murder Metal All right. What's up, motherfucker? It's a nice intro there. Yeah, you got to love that. Oh, Shane, man, he uh, is just killing it with those intros and commercials for us. We got some good stuff coming up tonight in more ways than one. Doing yes, episode indeed. 185 here, Murder Metal Mayhem, the Horns High Studios for the Horns High Podcast Network. Hell so, yeah. Fuck yeah. Cranking them out, guys. <laughs> getting closer to number 200, so... I had a couple of good ideas. I'll bounce them off you guys off mic, but a couple of ideas for a 200th episode topic. Something Sweet. different, maybe. Something kind of cool. So we'll see what we come up with. I'm sure we'll come up with a good one. Oh, it'll be a fucking awesome, I'm sure. Hell yeah. All right. Well, Joey, Chris, you guys are here with me. We had a great uh, Saturday. We had a little get together. It's fucking hey. fun as shit. Yeah, we had a cookout because Joey's moving away here in a couple of weeks. So we thought we'd get together just a night. We didn't have to do anything, right. just chilling and it was had fun. some friends over. Yeah, it was cool. Gummo wall bacon came up. Yeah, and old yeah. fucking Pete Saradovich. And yeah. Fucking- Bungle Chris's song. brother Michael, like a Michael, the sword with. <laughs> yeah, that was really fun. We chopped up Joey's first guitar out in the lawn. The very first electric guitar, BC Rich Warlock. We cut that motherfucker with a zombie tool. Hell yeah! And now we got the headstock here in the studio. Yeah. So, uh, people were wanting pieces of that, Joey. That was cool. <laughs> they were. Got, got so, some. <laughs> yeah, so that was fun, and we got pictures of that on Facebook. I got some good action shots of you guys chopping Hell that yeah. thing up. So. All right. Well, very cool. Uh, I think it was nice to get together, and definitely before you move away. Yeah. It's not like we awesome. won't see you, but you know it won't be nearly as often, right. and you'll be moving out of the studio finally, so you get to get out of here and <laughs> leave for once. So, all right. Well, what uh, what shirts we got on, Chris? What do you got going on? I got over on there? my uh, Mangler Wear shirt. If I can clothing company fucking got this from joey actually he gives me a lot of fucking shirts for some reason <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i mean that's that's shirts, cool that's sick. cool joey what about you man uh, i'm wearing the holy cow shirt and it's got the fucking the the checklist heroin and cocaine are not checked but poutine, poutine is. Ah, <laughs> nice i was gonna ask you that yeah. a canadian band oh yeah the montreal boys and holy cost gotta rep them we're doing the fucking canadian shit so yeah very cool and then because we're doing the canadian yes. band or the topic tonight i got my cdn record fucking shirt right. the one i just got recently uh so a lot of great bands on cdn oh, yeah. i definitely dig it so so yeah, so we got uh, a lot of Canadian stuff going on here tonight, and we got a lot of Canadian listeners, Chris. You know, people liking us from All the, the uh, you know great north there up in Canada. So I fucking love it. Yeah, so we appreciate it, and in turn, we love the Trailer Park Boys, man. Yes, we love we that shit. So <laughs> it's funny. It was the last thing on my computer. Yeah, that, that was funny. Now. That was funny. <laughs> Now, last week, guys, we did a crazy one. The wild story of Mr. Jack Unterweger, the Austrian serial killer who murdered, went to prison for life, (laughs) got out in 15 years, and Chris just (laughs) kept on fucking killing. Yeah, wrote books. Everybody thought he was reformed, and apparently not. No. He killed, killed a lot. quite a few. I killed a lot in a short amount of time. Yeah, with that distinctive knot that wound up getting him in trouble. So it was an interesting story. Multiple countries killing here in the United States. 
unbelievable. And so that was a good topic, I think, for the feature. And then I had the horns, and I did the metal feature on the death metal band Laceration. Fucking right. And had that five-minute piece of that interview I did with them and uh, the, the usual stuff, Mayhem and a Killer Cage match and all that. So it was a good one, and we were passing 800 listens to that one today when I checked, so appreciate everybody that, that did go give that a listen. Then you got the bonus episode the next day, the full interview. Fuck we yeah. did the full laceration interview, like 33 minutes, uh, and that one was passing 400 when I looked at that one today, so very cool. So between both, we, we got quite a few listens this week, so thanks, everybody. But if you missed it, go check out episode 184 and that bonus interview uh, that we released the day after. I just noticed that our sign in the studio says, Welcome to the Cum Zone. Oh, wow. <laughs> Who wrote that? I, I don't know. I would figure, we had some jokers in we here. We did. I would figure that's either Pete or Lily. I'm that's pretty my, sure it's Lily. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was Lily. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, very good. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, yeah, it was. Because of the fucking uh, the, the Sturb CD with the fucking... Oh, <laughs> she saw that. She's like, what nice. the fuck? Oh, oh. She didn't say what the fuck, but she's just oh. like, really? And so That's she just, funny. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Did you tell her it was Michael's? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> My uncle's jizz is in the Ziploc bag. Uh, so <laughs> tonight, though, guys, we're going up north here to Canada for another one with our friend Shane Borchuk. Uh, he's a listener from Winnipeg who's a 666 Club member. He contacted us months ago about Vince Lee when we right. talked about that. Yeah, and if you guys didn't hear that one, oh yeah, my God. Yeah, that was a wild one. That was the first time we had Shane on, and we've had him on a couple times. Clifford Olson, right. Alan Legere, um, and now for this one tonight, uh, it's going to be a good one. He suggested it. I never and heard of this dude very, before. very new. It is. It really is. Gabriel Wartman. Gabriel. The, the Nova Scotia man who murdered 22 people in 13 hours dressed as a cop in a police fucking cruiser, making it look like he was an RCMP officer. And like you said, Chris, cruiser. what's that? A replica cruiser. That's right. He didn't even steal one of their cars. He fucking had he a built, car. That yeah, he, he made his own. Into yeah. Perfectly. Like, yeah, it nailed it. God I mean, damn. holy shit with this dude. And this just happened in 2020. Yeah, so it's fucking very it's weird new. because until Shane mentioned it, I had no idea, dude. Yeah, me it's either. And weird. Shane, <clears throat> when you think about it, I don't think we've done a case that recent ever. I mean, uh, we've done some newer ones, yeah, but that's to think pretty. That, that this might be the most recent we've done. Right. Within the fucking our time. Yeah, two yeah. years within, yeah. you know, doing this. So pretty wild. So. You don't think about mass shootings in Canada, but we definitely got a brutal, bloody one for you tonight. And we're going to be eating some of Canada's best-known secrets. Joey, you mentioned it a little bit ago. Oh, yeah, poutine. We're going to fucking get down on it. And if you don't know what poutine is, I know what you're thinking, okay? Because that's what I thought when one of you or somebody said poutine, maybe it was Shane. I thought he was talking about Poontang, you know, so I'm like, Pussy. <laughs> okay, and then I realized, no, that's not the same thing, and uh, yeah, it's it's not, it's not Pussy, it's Poutine, it kind of makes you think of that, though, at least yeah. it does with Oh, yeah, me. definitely, dude. So, so if you're like, what the fuck is Poutine, we're not talking about Pussy, <laughs> we're talking about food, and it's, uh, it's a Canadian delicacy. Hell yeah. And we're going to talk about it tonight, but we're going to eat that. I got some, that the goes, mix from that's Montreal. That's the second time in a row now that I've come out here that Pete's fed me. Cause he was, oh, yeah, because yeah, Saturday. He was grilling on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I was on grill last, on, yep. on Saturday. Fuck yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I miss having my son around right, because right. he was always the grill guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He does a good job. But uh, anyway, so, yeah, I was on grill. Um, but I got some real poutine mix from Montreal. It's the real thing. I did a test run uh, when I first got it a few weeks ago, oh, and yeah. it was really good. And so I think you guys will like it tonight. Oh, 
Bad and, poutine. Oh, that's right. You guys said you did get it from yeah. that truck or was it a show or something? Yeah, I've had it a few different spots, but this will be, di- and this is like imported straight from there. So. Right. So it's going to be different than all what? the other ones I've had were like that bar or that fucking place. Oh, their version of it, basically. Right. Yeah. Which every one was good. But oh, sure. Like I said, I keep sending pictures to my boys up in uh, Montreal. And They're they just kind of scoffing. Me. Yeah. So I'm, we'll take a picture of this one tonight. We'll yeah. See what they say. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you'll have to let them know what kind it is because oh, okay. they'll yeah, yeah. know if yeah. they're from Montreal because that's where this place that this chain yeah. is based. We'll, is in we'll Montreal. plug it when we come back. Out. Oh, yeah, for sure. So that'll be tonight. And then Shane is going to get some poutine. Hell so yeah. he's going to have some <laughs> on hand. And so we'll talk to him about that. That'll be a lot of fun. But we like to do this kind of thing. Chris talking about, you know, cannibals and eating pulled like pork chop pork, yeah. sandwiches <laughs> talking about you know with the australian episode where we had the fosters which i know isn't really and australian. Australian. Vegemite. we had the spaghetti yeah we, we tried the, the spaghetti monster that's right that's right so we like to have some fun and so yeah why not do some poutine tonight Should that was the it? only one i couldn't join in on it was the spaghetti because my stomach wasn't feeling good and then afterwards the next time pete's like I mean, I felt that all fucking night. Oh, regretted yeah. that shit. <laughs> Franco American <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah, that fucked me up. <laughs> that's Fine Boy spaghetti Arby's monster. Spaghetti. If you're wondering what we're talking about, go listen to that. Yeah, shit. the Church it's of a the weird Flies. One. That yeah, is it's, it's super a funny fucking one. weird. April Fools, right? Right. Yep. Yeah, that's it right. It was. Yeah. So that'll be fun tonight. And Chris, you got the horns tonight doing a yeah. Disney-inspired band. 100% Disney. We are fucking going to do a extermination dismemberment tonight. Brutal. Oh, goddamn. Brutal. Very brutal. Christian band, yes. right? Yes, yes. Christian so, death metal. From, Bela- <laughs> from Belarus since last time I said Belarus. Belarus. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, so tonight uh, we'll be doing that in a metal segment. I got a Lost Classic for us, and Fuck we'll yeah. deal that in the metal segment. Hell yeah. And some metal news, too. A couple things I added today so uh, that we'll talk about. I'm sure you guys are already aware of the stuff I've got in the notes. Uh, Killer Cage Match tonight, guys. That's where we get our listeners to provide some random numbers on our Facebook page to help us decide who's going to fight and what they're fighting with in the steel cage. So, Chris, who do we want to thank? Tonight we have Courtney Hayes. What up, Courtney? Oh, yeah? We got uh, Laura Kovacs. Why not say Linda? I don't know. It should say <laughs> Laura, yes. <laughs> I, I read that. I'm like, that ain't right. No. But yeah, we got Laura Kovacs. What's up, Laura? How you doing? And Hell we yeah. got the one and only Rebecca Boomsock. Hell yeah. So, yeah, so the yeah. ladies tonight, I ladies think last week, it. wasn't it? All all guys or the week before, Something maybe? Something like that. I don't remember. So yeah, that. so we got the ladies tonight. And Joey, we got a nasty one. Yeah. For you tonight, we're What's... going. Uh, we're going to the fucking northeast coast up in the New England area with these two. We got fucking William Devin Howe, which you know some of y'all might know him as Sick Ripper. <laughs> so you know that's going to be stupid. And yeah. then he's going to go up against that stinky motherfucker from Poughkeepsie. Oh. Fucking Kendall Francois. Brutal. Yeah, that's going to be a good matchup with Sick Ripper and Kendall Francois. Yeah. That should be good because Kendall Francois was a big motherfucker. He's a big old but De- William Devin Howell is a pretty stocky motherfucker too, so it should be good. Uh, and they're going to have two objects to fight with and a variable to keep it interesting. And we'll do that as always in the mayhem segment tonight, guys. We got a new sponsor here on the podcast. Oh, Great, we do. We got Sick Rick Mass coming at you. Like Hell yeah. Making some of the sickest latex masks that you can find, dude. Yeah, amazing stuck r- uh, stuff. Rick Fisher, sick Rick himself. Sick Rick! Out. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. We'll have to see if he likes that. Uh, <laughs> maybe make a commercial for him. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so we've got this, uh, you know, mask of the week. We're putting that because we got nine of these in here. Right. So we're going to be rotating. Want to rotate them. And we got this new desk mount, which works out really good. And Chris, which one did we pick tonight to kind of feature and discuss? If you guys know the metal band Venom and their black metal album. Right. It's the fucking goddamn devil, devil head, head off of that. So we got that. He's got the fucking like the Venom logo in the back of the head that looks fucking dope yeah. as shit. And, and an inverted cross stand. Yeah, he came with an inverted cross stand just yeah. for him. So right now we don't have him on that. But right, we, we got, got him on but, the desk 
uh, display type uh, we, uh, mount. Which when we got him, we decided to call killer. him Dominus. Yeah, we we call him Dominus because I wrote a story uh, about a demon called Dominus, and it just kind of looked like him, right? You know, so so yeah, we've we've coined the name Dominus for him, but it's the 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 devil head on the Venom Black Metal album. But Rick is is just killer. That was the first one we got. And then the rest of them are all the true crime, serial killer stuff. I don't even remember the one after Dominus. I think it was Pogo. Was I'm it? pretty sure, yeah. So, um, But yeah, we've got some good ones. And Rick is amazing. And I'm going to link to him in the episode description where you can get a hold of him. Like him on Facebook and uh, friend request him because that's how he keeps people up to date on the new masks and stuff. And you can buy his masks. At Sick Rick, that's S I K R I K masks.com. And, and again, them, got that in the episode description. And you can get them with uh, wearable with no eyes. That way you can see through them, or you can get them right. with the eyes just display only, which is a bit what we have in here. Cause, right. Yeah. yeah. Most of his masks you can do that with. He'll do them zombie if you want them. Yeah. Different black and white designs, you know, color like the H.H. H. Holmes and Sepia. So he can do some really cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, we got the, the Ed Gein one in Zombie, which is cool. Um, and we've got the uh, Bundy in black and white, uh, Fish in black and white. So just really cool uh, to, you know, mix them up and, and get the different masks and the different... Uh, in the different versions and variations of it that he's got. I don't know. The Bundy maybe is a black and white. No, the no, Bundy's regular. Like yeah, I'm normal sorry. Normal skin tone. It's just dark where I'm looking at it. Right. The, the fish one is the black yeah, and white one with the blue eyes, which is yeah. which is cool. So, uh, so we got so many man. of them in here, yeah. and we just love this shit. So thanks, Sick Rick, and uh, check him out and support him and what he's doing. All right, we got uh, a lot of people listening to Murder Metal Mayhem. Keep seeing the numbers this week. We're at like 2,900 listens. So thank you, everybody that checked it out. Thank you much. And seeing some names on the uh, top 10 list that I haven't seen in a while or haven't seen at all. Yeah. Um, Just interesting to see kind of the the new uh, cities that appear on the list. And I noticed that... um, the uh, Temple, Texas has been up there. Uh, you right. know, a lot of our Texas listeners love old tech, so cool to see a uh, city in Texas getting yeah. some listens. And uh, just different ones. It's just really cool. So we appreciate it, guys. All right, well, we got a lot on our plate tonight. We're going to be taking a trip. we got to have some shit in our plate. Fuck yeah, we are. We do. <laughs> li- really Literally. do. Uh, we're taking a trip up north once again to the land of poutine. You know, it's hotter up there right now than it is here. Holy shit, really? Yeah, I talked to a customer today in Toronto, and she said it's like over 100 degrees there. Holy fuck. Yeah. So they are getting blasted with heat up there, so it's kind of funny. We're in like low 80s here and pretty sweet, clear skies it's been for friggin' like Days. a couple of weeks. So yeah. we've been pretty fortunate. Uh, but we're going up there, the land of Poutine, the land of the Trailer Park Boys. We're going to get Shane on the phone and do this shit. So the Poutine is coming out of the oven. Fuck yeah. So let's go get some. Fucking get our mass murder on. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Some death metal there from Winnipeg up in your neck of the woods, Shane. Some Votov and the song Pacify the Enslaved. Fucking sick shit. And speaking of Canadians, we got our buddy Shane Borchuk on with us. How's it going, bud? Pretty good, man. Feeling good. What's going on? Excellent. Hell Excellent. Yeah, We're doing good you. here. Not quite in the heat wave that you guys are up there. That sounds absolutely crazy that the Canadians would be suffering from a heat wave. <laughs> UK 
suffer from a heat wave here. It's beautiful, moderate, right, and uh, not complaining. But I feel sorry for those that are dealing with that shit. We but, get extremes, yeah, <laughs> for from sure. One to the other. Um, and since we're doing this Canadian case, we thought it would be fun to eat some poutine. And in the intro, Shane, I was talking about how the first time I heard, I think it was you say poutine. <laughs> I thought you were referring to poontang, <laughs> and I didn't want to sound like an idiot, so I just kind of went with it. You want to eat some, <laughs> and, eat some pussy? Yeah. You get some of that poutine, man? I guess. So I was just like, what the fuck is that? And then at some point, it came out that you know what it actually was, and I felt like an idiot. Um, but that's not the first time you know, I felt like an idiot. But. <laughs> I, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure I'm right that when I first got this shirt from Holy Cost, yeah, that I had no idea what poutine was, so I didn't really understand the fucking shirt to begin with. <laughs> but then I figured it out, you know. But yeah, I'm pretty positive that yeah, I was. You had no confused. idea. I wouldn't have known. I've never even heard of it before. And uh, they speak uh, French. So I just assume that some of the shit's like, you know, oh, like in French. French words yeah, or so right? I, I'm not going to know it anyway. Right? <laughs> hey, Shane, I was saying to these guys, I thought Poutine was a dude that runs Russia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. So, uh, so yeah, so we're eating this delicacy tonight known as Poutine to our Canadian friends. And I ordered some of the gravy mix online, and so I went on Amazon, like, you know, any American would do, right. <laughs> trying to find poutine. <laughs> and I stumbled upon this stuff, and I'm reading it, you know, the reviews, and it was very favorable. You know, people from Canada saying, like, this is the real thing. It's from Montreal. And on the package, it says St. Hubert, as we would say it, but I'm like, no. <laughs> That's got to sound like all classy, you know, the French with the Hubert. Hubert. So, so yeah. So I, I think that's uh, Shane said that's how you would say it. But uh, uh, yeah, so we're we're doing some uh, Canadian poutine tonight. I got some basic frozen French fries. We got cheese curds all day long here in the Midwest. Fucking I mean, right, it's the fucking I, home I posted a picture of the the plate. You know, so I'm just waiting to see the all my Canadian friends fucking. Hey, Talk Shane shit. said it looked legit. No, no, but it, it's funny because the, the only comment I saw, like right whenever I posted it, my buddy's like, uh, he was like, uh, "Steak fries, pretty interesting choice." <laughs> <laughs> I, I straight up said, me? "I straight up said, yeah, well, we wanted to do tater tots." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's God. all good. It's all potatoes. Yeah, right? no, it's yeah. all the same shit. I pour that shit on potato chips. <laughs> hey, hey! I'll tell you what Canadians got. I, I, what you guys got that we don't have down here, but it it blows my mind. Y'all got ketchup flavored potato chips, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That that's not a thing down here. Oh, really? <laughs> no, but everyone, all my friends from well, up there, they funny. always post that shit, and I'm like, ketchup what? flavor. Okay. That's fucked up. I never heard of that before. Dude, Ricky, oh, yeah, that's pretty standard. Wow. <laughs> Ricky eats them on Trailer Park Boys. Oh, yeah. Ketchup chips. <laughs> oh yeah, your fingers get all fucking red. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so yeah, so we totally get like method actors here. We're getting into the whole vibe. Oh yeah. We're eating the fucking poutine. We got the real shit. St. Hubert from fucking Montreal. Hell yeah. So we're doing the best that we can. And Shane, you've got some yourself, right? Yeah, I, it's gone now, but I did, yes. <laughs> what? Uh, where did you get it from? You gave me the name. Oh, Actually, I was at Safeway and uh, picked up some of the clubhouse mix. And Oh, okay. It's the right. same, same type of thing. Fucking That's right. cool. Yeah, because you were telling me, like, there's, like, chains... Oh, there's there's quite a few of them in Winnipeg that just sell poutine. That's what they do. Yeah. So, so yeah. So who would have known? So we learned something. Listening to Murder Metal Mayhem, you just get very worldly. You know, you learn all these cultured things from different places. <clears throat> and tonight, it's not poutine; it's poutine. <laughs> all right. All right. So oh, they're good. Tonight, both are good. Yeah, yes, that's sir, good. Good. Yeah. yeah, thumbs up on both. Uh, tonight, we're going to be doing a story you don't expect to hear in Canada, though. Unfortunately, mass shootings have been more common than ever here in the U.S. But on April 18th and 19th of 2020, Gabriel Wartman went on a fucking rampage, murdering 22 innocent people, 16 different locations. 
setting just fires, shit on fires, dude, just terrorizing people up in Canada in the province of Nova Scotia. It's a horrible story, and another one that makes the Royal Canadian Mounted Police look like absolute shit. I think this one is the worst of any of them that we've covered yet in terms of how the miserable fucking fail. Right. How yeah, it's embarrassing. It really is. I, I feel for you because we're going to dig into the details tonight and get into this. And so, Shane, this was your suggestion. Um, and it's amazing how recent this was. And you've been telling me there's been a lot up there in Canada in the news lately. Why is that? Is it just because it's still fresh or are there new developments? Well, they're still investigating it. There's an inquiry going on. It's called the uh, Mass Casualty Commission. And his uh, girlfriend was actually just up and made a statement a few days ago. So it's been in the national news quite a bit lately. Interesting. So, yeah, so we're going to talk about this case, but I bet a lot of you... Uh, maybe not so familiar with it, but Shane, can you explain to our listeners, most of our listeners are here in the United States, but where exactly in Canada are we talking about here with Nova Scotia? East coast, baby, all the way. Nova Scotia is as east as you can go. It uh, kind of dips down a bit, but you guys know where Bangor, Maine is. It's right. pretty much straight, straight east from there, about 400 kilometers as the bird flies. Okay. All right. All right, so we know that, and of course, that's where the Trailer Park Boys is. So, you any bet. fans of the Trailer Park Boys might uh, know about Halifax and Nova Scotia. Now, Chris, we expect this shit here in the United States, but the last one of these we did was the Port Arthur massacre there in Tasmania. Now, this right. one here in Nova Scotia, but obviously, this shit goes on all over the place. Oh, I can only imagine it goes on everywhere. It's- Everybody, well, not everybody, but people snap all over the fucking plate, all over the world. Right. And it's just like, I think because we are in the U.S., we hear more, obviously hear about ours more than anything else. True. Like I said before, Shane mentioned this, even as recent as it is, I didn't have any idea like about it. So yeah. So that's kind of fucked up. I'm as surprised because it's a, it obviously. It was, a, co- it was the COVID timing, you know, it's right, like, true. Right. COVID had just started, and this was in the news for like one day, and then bang, page two. Oh, yeah, that's that's a good point. COVID was top-tier everything. Right, right. Yeah. Now, Joey, do you expect our listeners outside of Canada to know a whole lot about Gabriel Wartman? Uh, maybe only because of uh, how much stuff there is about him in, in the social media and everything else, so possibly if people are looking up things like that that's it but um maybe not so much as you hear about everyone that happens in the united states yeah and unfortunately it's because that's being used as a levy one way or another so they it's it's really fucked up to say this but fucking uh media and everything else loves when there's a shooting in the u.s because that's just fucking one way to drive a stake (laughs) between its people and yeah it fucking sucks so anything that happens around here you hear about it where you hear something like this or you know the the port arthur which that was pretty big but still like you didn't hear about it like you heard about columbine and shit right right i mean i'm you know with 22 dead this is definitely a serious news story so it's amazing that uh, we didn't hear more about it um, and again, with the RCMP looking so bad on this case, um, definitely interested to talk about it. Now, Shane, to set this one up, I think it makes sense to discuss some of the history of Gabriel Wartman. I mean, this guy just didn't show up shooting people, but what sort of guy was he and what did people that knew him say about him? Well, it uh, all started out with intergenerational violence, at least four generations that we know of. So it was pretty fucked up family dynamic right out of the gate. Brutal childhood, you know, violent. And uh, you know, I'll quickly mention a couple highlights. His his dad burnt his, his security blanket in front of him instead of oh, weaning man. him off it. Burnt it in front of him. Damn. And uh, then another time they were on a ferry trip and uh, he dangled... 
him and his brother over the edges of the ferry over the water, threatening to drop them. Oh, my God. That's fucking brutal. Wow. Yeah, he, he made Gabriel shoot his own pet dog because Gabriel wasn't looking after it well enough. And, I, I uh, remember hearing that. Yeah, oh, that's so that's fucking fucked crazy. up. Wow. <laughs> he actually Jeez. handed Gabriel a loaded gun once and asked Gabriel to kill him. Huh. So you know, the, at a very <laughs> young age, violence is normalized, you know, and, and right. he, he turned to true crime and became uh, a greasy motherfucker out to scam everybody, you know, even his own family. And in uh, high school, he started smuggling and selling smokes and alcohol from the States. Oh, I th- wow. I think he, yeah, I think he might have been smuggling and selling drugs and oxy too later on and might have some connections with the Hells Angels and a Mexican cartel and he had all kinds of real estate and tax scams. And oddly enough, the general public actually had mixed feelings about Warm. And some people hated him. And others said he was a great guy, you know, funny, smart, salt of the earth type of guy. And they couldn't right. believe he did something like this. You know, wow. he was charitable. He would give away dentures to people who couldn't afford them. Yeah, like cancer patients and shit. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So he could turn on the charm when he had to. Which Interesting. Just goes to show you what a psychopath he was. But, you know, right. he loved to be in control. He loved to win. And he also loved to pull one over on people. Wow. Interesting. I wish I sure had me some of them fucking Wortman dentures. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about you. <laughs> yeah, you and Michael, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we thought about in the Killer Cage match to get him and Michael gumming each other. <laughs> I am not doing Killer that. Cage match, so. <laughs> we were laughing about that Saturday at our cooking. Right, event. right. Yeah. So now the thing that separates this story from other mass shootings is the fact that Gabriel Wartman actually posed as a police officer in uniform and drove around in this replica RCMP cruiser. And like Joey pointed out, I mean, it looked like the real fucking deal. Yeah. Um, and it's no wonder that some of his victims actually thought he was a cop and responding to the active shooter incident, which is just fucked up because... That's how some of these people right. died was going to him. Now, Shane, I got a quick question. There was some things I was listening to when he's talking about getting the the fucking making this car, like getting this car replica car made up. Yeah. They're talking about getting the decals for the fucking goddamn car. And I, I heard mo- multiple people saying decals. Do they call decals decal a lot up there? I call them decals. Do you? All right. All okay. right. It's a Canadian. Right. I never heard of that I, one I was before. listening. I was like, what the fuck is a decal? And then I kept listening. <laughs> I'm like, oh, a decal. decal. All right. okay. Yeah, that sounds very southern. My decal. <laughs> my I got decal. my decals on my car. <laughs> that does sound redneck <laughs> fuck. Now that you, yeah, well, all That's right. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, because I'm from the East Coast. Not a redneck at all. And I've always known it as decal. Yeah. I never even heard of decals. That's <laughs> hilarious. I heard that. That's I was like, stuff. I got to ask Shane about this. Dude. That's good. Hey, go to the authority on <laughs> right. this shit, Chris, you know. So um, it happens in on April 18th. This is when it starts, uh, 2020, in the small town of port a in Nova Scotia. Now, there are some classic fucking names of towns. There's one. That I can't even wait to say it. <laughs> I can't even wait to say it, okay? We're going to get to that. But right now we're in Portapic, uh, in Nova Scotia. This is a town of 100 fucking people. That's a fucking small town. That's dude. pretty fucking small. It doubles its population yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the summer months. So it doubles in the summer. It's a rural area. If you watch the docks on this, looks like an absolutely beautiful place. 81 miles north of Halifax. So, Chris, it starts with Wartman's common law wife. Yeah, they freaking, some would say girlfriend, what have you. They yeah. referred to her both ways. They but what was the deal a, with this? They got man. into some kind of fight. I don't know what at a it party. was. Yeah, they was at a party, and then I saw somewhere there was like FaceTiming another friend or some shit too, and he just fucking don't know what they were fighting about. Just snaps, like a grabs her fucking beats her a little bit and then throw, like handcuffs her ties her up right. throws her in the trunk of his fake ass cop car and lights the house on fire like <laughs> fuck it we're starting this thing off right we are fucking ass- assault kidnapping arson right? fucking yeah, we check are in the boxes done, smashed dude. her phone too so she couldn't call yeah, for help pretending to be a cop all that but she got out 
she was able to hide in the woods and do whatever. So like, yeah, she got lucky, man. She could have been the first victim, but she hid, as you said, in the woods. There, it is crazy that he didn't just like start with her in the killings because he right. just goes off, dude, like out of nowhere. Like mm-hmm. first person he sees, just like pop, yeah, fuck off. I think he wanted to use the old. Did you see what you made me yeah. do? Like, yeah, I could see I that. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's very possible. Like fucking How- Howard Unger. Ung, what the fuck? I can't remember how to pronounce his last name. Oh, that the, dude that Unru? Like, yeah, Unru, yeah. Yeah, the one in New Jersey that just started shooting. Just walks out the door and starts shooting yeah. people. Fuck. We've done some of these. It just fucked up. Uh, 10 p.m. Uh, as uh, multiple people are calling 911 to report shots fired and multiple fires in port a um, and the fifth estate documentary, that was the really good one. Yeah, that was good. I uh, had interviews with the families sure. and stuff. Said that the wife was one of the victims uh, that was the first to call 911, um, which is fucked up. Um, this was a sad story. Yeah, a terrible story. You dude. know, Wartman showed up at their house, um, shot the husband dead. And then this woman barricaded herself in her bedroom. She shot through the fucking door. Her kids are hiding, fucking watching it. Kids are hiding. The two boys in the room. They managed to escape and go to the neighbor's house uh, running through the woods. They fucking called 911. And I, like, heard, like, the 911 call with the kids. Oh, did you? It's kind of messed up because, like... I'm sure they're like in shock or whatever, but in the 911 call, the, the kid's just like, yeah, there's this crazy man running around. He just killed my parents, set the house on fire. I mean, that's not verbatim, but right. like, he did like, wow, almost not no emotion, but it's not what you'd figure you'd hear from like, like a young kid like that. Wow. And hey, Shane, I don't know if this is true or not, but I also heard that he actually, the phone that he used, he actually had to go, like, he like went and got it out of his dead dad's pocket. Oh no, I didn't hear that. Okay, I don't like I said. I heard. Brutal. I heard that one thing. I heard that one place. I didn't know if that was true or not. But Interesting. Anyway, could that be. Would, that's, that wow. would be fucked up, though. That is fucked it's up. Trauma right there. So Warpman returns to his own burning house, shoots a woman who lived across the street from him. She thought he was a cop. Came out of her house to talk to him. Uh, that's the one whose uh, neighbors that that the kids ran to. She has Ish. her boys. Um, and they take him and they go hide in the woods. They're the one calling nine one one. Uh, much of the time they're on the phone with these operators, and I can't imagine these kids, like you said, Chris, just totally shell shocked, not really knowing what the hell to do. I did see that older brother of theirs that was on the documentary was outraged that the RCMP left him in the woods yeah. for that amount of time claiming that the area was surrounded by police and they were safe, but why the fuck would you leave four kids in the woods scared to fucking death? Right. Just saw their parents killed. The other kid saw his mom killed. I mean, that's just fucked up. Um, Plus, he said he didn't even... He's among a lot of people that didn't believe that the cops were even... Right. Had the place canvassed at all. Yeah, because they said they hardly saw any cops there at all, you know? So it's unbelievable they wouldn't have rescued them. Um, but And they also told the police that it was Wartman. He was dressed up like a cop, and he was driving an RCMP car. And we're going to talk about this multiple times, but how long the cops knew this and, and weren't s- fucking passing the shit on. Right. I mean, Shane, it seems like one fuck up after another here. And I'm just wondering, is it because there's not these kind of incidents in this part of the country? Or what do you think? I mean, they train for this shit. I mean, I'm just shocked that they dropped the ball like the way they did here. Yeah. Yeah. I think experience is a big part. Inexperience is a big part of it. I mean, we have some mass shootings in Canada in the past and large man hunts, but doesn't seem like uh, the powers that be have learned much from their past mistakes, or at least they haven't addressed any of the deficiencies. I mean, the communication and bureaucracy really seems to hamper logistics quite a bit, you know. And for, for example, uh, you know, just in 2019, there was a manhunt started in BC, went halfway across Canada up to northern Manitoba. And, you know, calling in the armed forces, the Canadian armed forces is, is just a no brainer. So, 
they did that, but it still took over at eight to get the armed forces involved. So, you know, with these these serious incidents like wow. this, you, you need the capability to get all hands on deck, like like right fucking now, eh? Right, and right. With the RCMP, you know, there might have been a bit of an ego with that too, just because there's such a huge, well-funded Canadian-wide police force. Like, I don't know if you know the difference between the RCMP and the local police, but the RCMP is in an area where they have a low population or they're remote, and it's just too small to support a local provincial police detachment. So okay. the policing is it's actually contracted out federally to the RCMP. So I guess they're kind of like mercenaries. Oh, wow. Right. Interesting. I didn't know that. I thought they were like an FBI type of type of thing, but I didn't know. They are strictly contract work. Interesting. That's crazy. So two of the neighbors are driving around. They call 911 with locations of these fires. Wartman passes them. He shoots the driver in the shoulder, and then a second shot grazes this dude's fucking forehead. They fucking narrowly escape out of there. Very fucking lucky. Multiple 911 callers said the gunman was posing as a cop and in a police car. So the RCMP knew this early on. But as we're going to talk about, for whatever reason, held this information from the public and doesn't make any sense. And when they do finally fucking say something to the public, the way they do it's stupid. It is really stupid. <laughs> Extremely. Yeah, ridiculous. So the first officers to arrive were there at 1030. So it's about 30 minutes from the first 911 call. Uh, three officers were there. They begin to walk through the area and find some of the victims. Uh, some victims, though, would not be found for hours. Uh, the Fifth Estate documentary said the first two officers or the first officers were overwhelmed and just called for backup instead of looking for the active shooters. So. That brings up a subject, Chris. We've talked about this before when we had Mick on, our Australian police officer listener. He said that they are trained differently since Columbine on these active shooters. They're supposed to go after them, right. not sit back and wait. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, most recently that school shooting that we just had. Those cops just like... right not going in it's like dude, there's literally children in there you're, mm -hmm. you're trained to fucking oh do this God. fucking job dude you don't sit back here just because you're scared you're supposed to be saving these lives yeah dude. it's fucking horrible i'm sure eventually we might get to that case but that uvalde texas yeah. one is infuriating all those cops outside that door that didn't break it down like the parents trying to get in and they were like right trying to do the cops jobs and shit yeah it's really bad but I don't know what the hell, you know, they were waiting for. I don't know if they and the fact that, you know, Shane brings up a good point, the way that they are like a contracted type of security, basically, you know, some of these guys might have been like, fuck it, I'm not getting paid enough to risk my life, so I'm not going right. to fucking do it. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's, it seems alarming that a cop wouldn't, you know, want to get this fucking shooter out of the picture as quickly as possible. And Joey, we talk about, you know, Columbine a lot, you know, with these active shooter stories we do. Columbine's always going to get brought up because it, whenever it came out, it was basically the fucking sketchbook on how to do a fucking school shooting. Right, yeah. Right. And it was like, it was the first time that people, I think, uh, on, a, on a national level, international even, looked at the reasons why those kids were doing what they were doing. Right. Um, it's not like Brenda Wilson, you know, had a bad Monday or right. You Which know, would they, be, we still need to do that. Right. One. Oh yeah, or, it's definitely going to be uh, done. Start or uh, Brenda what, Spencer, Brenda yeah, and Spencer yeah. down at, what was at uh, University of Texas. Uh, I'm spacing. Oh, the tower, the the yeah, yeah. Charles Albright or uh, <laughs> Albright, Albright. Uh, Whitman, Whitman, yeah. yes, Charles Whitman. Anyway, so you got ones like that, but um, when they did it, it it. I don't know. It didn't have the same effect as whenever we have shootings now. It was something that happened, and it was an event, and it was a tragedy, but people didn't try to dissect it and fucking fear that it was going to become a norm. Right. Where now that's what it seems to have become. Um, 
again, I'll go back to it and say that I feel like fucking media has had a has had a, a terrible effect on it as far as also glorifying these guys, and introducing yeah. it to these kids too. You right. know, you saw like, um, I mean, Columbine. Like I said, it, it, it it's like a fucking sketchbook for it. But you get some of these other killers, uh, those two kids that fucking wore the scream mask and shit and killed that girl, and I can't remember. But I can't, yeah. th- there's some other ones, and it's like. All of these kids, like, almost specifically have an interest in fucking, uh, you know, Klebold and fucking Harris. Harris, yeah. and it, it can't be healthy. Right. But they fucking study something to try to figure out how to better themselves than yeah. what he did mm-hmm. or they did. And Yeah, it's fucked know. up what a long-lasting effect that's had on yeah, people. Yeah, and I don't know. think it's ever going to go anywhere. I don't think Not so Not to either. mention, I mean, just the term itself, the trench coat mafia. Right. Everything about it is just fucking ominous, fucking symbolic. Right. right. Um, and like I said, came about 1999, turning point when people started trying to fucking worry about how fucking uh, people reacted mentally. Right. And everything. It was it was a big deal. Yeah, for sure. So uh, now at this point, uh, the neighbors uh, said that Wartman shot at them told the police that he was driving around in this replica car uh this would be a huge issue with the families of the victims uh and the survivors of this massacre like you said on these interviews you see they're just infuriated of why didn't the rcmp let the public know that wartman was posing as a cop and driving around in that car because this could have saved some lives. I mean, there For were real, people that would not have stopped had they known that. Right. You know? It's like, I don't know if that's him or not, because they thought he was a cop, but they just right. chased. All right, there's help right there. Yeah, exactly. So, Shane, how big of a deal was that with the RCMP not filling in the public until much later on about the car and the uniform and all that? Yeah, this was a, a fucking huge miss. They, they didn't share that information Till about one hour before Wormman was killed. I mean, the families and the victims are very understandably upset about this. And a lot of the investigation is centered on what the RCMP knew, when they knew it, how they shared that information, both internally and externally to the public. Like you say, I mean, when, when most people, you know, a cop pulls into your driveway, your, your reaction is you're going outside to see what they want. So, right. you know, so many deaths could have been prevented if the public had known sooner that the su- suspect was driving a replica RCMP car and a police uniform. I mean, the only excuse that I've heard is that the RCMP didn't want the general public to start shooting at every RCMP officer that they see. I mean, I can uh, understand that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I could, I could see it a little bit, but... You know, I, I don't think in, in Canada here, I don't think the <laughs> chance of that happening would be right, right. you know, next to none. Yeah, you got to yeah, be yeah. down in like Texas or Alabama for some shit yeah. like that. Right? <laughs> I mean, I could see sitting at your doorstep with a shotgun protecting your family and your house, but you're, right. you're not going out actively hunting for an RCMP officer. That's a right, good point. Right. That's a good point. That's a good point. So it's 11.30 p.m. Uh, the RCMP posts a fucking tweet. Jesus. This blows my fucking mind. Yeah, that's the first notification yeah. the public gets. A, is a fucking, fucking tweet. tweet saying that they're dealing with a firearms complaint. Are you fucking kidding yeah, me? Yeah, no murders. Yeah, no. I mean, you might as well have said the paper got delivered a little late. You know, like, what the <laughs> fuck? I mean, that's downplaying the fuck out of this <laughs> incident bit. here. I mean, really. And using Twitter just blows my fucking mind. They tell residents of Porta Pick to stay indoors and lock up. Talk about downplaying this. I mean, I just can't fucking believe it. The police set up a perimeter of just over a mile out. But if this dude's driving a police cruiser, he's most likely already outside of that by now. Oh, he's gone. 90 minutes after he shot the the first victim. So this is just one fail after another. Now, as we go into April 19th, so this is a two-day thing, started at 10 o'clock p.m., Uh, On the 18th, going now into the 19th, early morning, people are still confused. There's conflicting rumors that Wartman was apprehended because they thought they had all the cars accounted for. They didn't realize he had one more car. Yeah, because he had like four of those replica cars, right? right? 
Yeah, and they were finding these cars, so they thought maybe he killed himself. So that, you know, that rumor's going around that he was apprehended, all this other stuff. Didn't they also fucking, they also said that he fucking committed suicide. Yeah, that's what I was saying. he was yeah. dead. Mm-hmm. And he was never dead. So who the fuck, where I know. did that come from? It's just one mess after another. <laughs> But that's the problem with not letting people know what's going right. on because yeah. the rumors are going to go and people are going to say, oh, did you hear this? Oh, did you hear that? Um, now, Chris, I saw that the RCMP weren't able to get a helicopter yeah, up in the air. they only had one on the East Coast there. Yeah, only one, and it's in fucking maintenance. I mean, uh, that's just, I mean, I guess that that shit happens, but. I mean, you're not expecting this shit to happen. Like, of course. And, and you got to do fucking PM shit on machines all the time. So, right. I mean, if you got it in there and you're got part of the engine tore apart, what can you fucking do? I of mean, course. You really it just can't is do like shit. the timing yeah, is the, just absolutely awful. The coincidence awful, sucks, you know? like for real. Right. But yeah, one helicopter in at this moment that you really fucking need that motherfucker. Right. It's down for me. Uh, yeah, that's just bad timing. Yeah, really, for, for definitely. Uh, so it was later determined that Wartman left the port of pick area at 10.45 p.m., so shortly after the police responded, just what we were saying. One person interviewed I saw said that they believed he drove out of port of pick on a dirt road that ran by some blueberry fields. He said everyone knew about that shortcut out of town, but the cops apparently didn't or Did, didn't think didn't they needed to off. worry about it. Um, they didn't have that road staked out, so Wartman was easily, you know, able to drive away. So uh, completely ridiculous, um, you know. And not to just bash the RCMP because you know, obviously they're front and center tonight. But Chris brought up the Uvalde, Texas incident. I mean, these things happen, and it just seems like when you really need them most, I mean, that's when you hate to hear of something like this happening, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just read a story uh, yesterday of some mass shooting that was just starting here recently in the U.S., and some armed citizen with a concealed carry stopped him. dropped his ass right on the spot. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you ball. hear stories yeah, like that, that. That's pretty some, fucking awesome. I mean, awesome. you hear about three of those stories, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it is very lopsided, the stories there. But yeah, that I think Indiana in a mall. I, think I was just going to say I think Indiana, that was yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So. But then he get in trouble for breaking mall rules for having the weapon or something. Probably. That's Probably. What's, Probably. That's, 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 that's dumb the thing. Shit. Like, everybody, like, especially Shane, obviously, you see how American are the gun fucking debate here is just ridiculous yeah yeah but uh the thing is is fucking i watch a lot of true crime shit and i'm really big into interrogations and shit and i watch these things about all these people who have a fucking claim for self-defense that killed somebody because of this reason or they were coming out and you know what i'm saying almost every single time the cops break that shit down to where it's not a case of self-defense like they fucking start going in and fucking bringing out surveillance and bringing out other witnesses and how the person feels like it happened and in their mind probably how they really did see it happen. Right. In hindsight, it's always a a possibility of de-escalation or something like that. And it sucks because all these people fucking, you know, want to have their their weapons for protection to save their family and things like that. But a lot of times it doesn't go that way. And even if somebody breaks in your house or something like that and you shoot them, you end up doing some kind of time. Yeah. It's fucked up. It is fucked up. It really is. But like you said, Joey, it always becomes a political debate of gun control versus not gun control. Or, you know, it just it just goes on and on and on. But then but then you watch the shit like uh, the documentaries, like the Fifth Estate or whatever, the same thing as Shane was saying. And those people up there were saying the same thing. If these cops had let us know what was going on, I would have had my gun out ready. Right. And one of them might have could have stopped him way in advance. Sure. Yeah, if he came at me. Like... So that's another fucking reason why maybe, you know, it would be better to have it. But that's that's the debate right there. Right. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. It just seems like the fact that they let this guy leave town and just go on this rampage. And this this fucking road that he was going on, like they fucking they showed that road like a couple of the dot or the newsreels and shit. And I mean, we know those roads here for sure out the country. Yeah, those are the places where. You could have stopped Wartman in a number of ways. Right. Blocked him off, fucking stopped him out in the wood, anything. 
Right. And fucking contain that situation. And not let them get in. Right. Yeah, it's not like you're people. fucking flying through a fucking a city or a town at high speeds, putting right. a lot of people at risk. Right. Otherwise, it's, this dude was fucking out in, in the middle the country, of nowhere. Right. Should have fucking got him. Right. Yeah. It's a shame. So Shane Wartman escapes and spends the rest of the night parked behind a welding shop about 16 miles east of port pick um, do you think he did a whole lot of sleeping in that uh, car back there? <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> probably not getting everything probably situated. Not. Probably it, getting his uh, list together. He should have went to the welding visit. shop and made him a fucking killdozer out of one of his vehicles. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Marv Niemeyer, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, but that RCMP emergency response team eventually shows up, but it sounds like a little... A little too late, Shane. Yeah, yeah, there was a total total lack of manpower there and coordination. Uh, you know, they, the RCMP, they didn't know that area at all. Like, they were calling their dispatchers, you know, do we go left or right? They didn't oh, know wow. what they were doing at all. Yeah. they. I mean, and, you got... Like you were saying, they thought they had it wrapped up at one point, eh? Right. They thought he had committed suicide. They, right. they found the three cop cars all burnt out. They right. they came to the conclusion that he was in that fire. So right. they had kind of held back after that. Right. I think it's kind of fucked up. You got multiple structure fires in an open area, and you can't find which direction to go. Right. <laughs> yeah, very strange. <laughs> and, and apparently they didn't have good cell reception either. Like, they, they were trying to check on, uh, like, Google Earth and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Nothing. Damn. So it's 1 a.m. on the 19th of April. The RCMP finally sends an alert out to the police across Nova Scotia about Wartman and the fact that he's driving this old white police car, but he's armed and dangerous. And at 5.45 a.m., Wartman leaves the welding shop where he stayed the night and drove north on Highway 4 to a house in a town of Wentworth. Was apparently. it J.G. Wentworth? I don't know. <laughs> I want my money and I want it now. Um, apparently he knew the residents and killed the couple and their two dogs. So that's fucked up. Um, and this is at like 6.30 a.m. Um, so we're into the second day of this shit. Uh, Wartman stays at their house for about three hours. And some of the Still victims... In. You know, were people that he had pet, petty grievances with seem kind of, you know, odd that you would right. single them out to kill over the shit he was fucking killing them over. But that's kind of the remember, whatever his name was, Howard Unger. Right. That story. He like picked a few. That's yeah, true. That's, specific yeah. ones. Yeah. That he thought. <laughs> yeah. Like that one uh, pharmacist. Yeah. Because yep. He was mad he wasn't a pharmacist. <laughs> yeah. Fucked up. Um, at about the same time, the RCMP located Wartman's wife. Uh, he had smashed her cell phone, as I mentioned, and she managed to hide out at a neighbor's house after spending most of the night in the wood, barefoot and freezing her ass off. Uh, she gave police a picture of Wartman and the replica car he was driving. And uh, so that gets out there finally. Um, and she told the police there had been a history of domestic abuse some that she did not report. So, and of course, the police would have his record as well. And I don't know how well that was communicated to everybody. Um, but at 8 a.m., the RCMP puts out a bolo, be on the lookout uh, to officers with the updated information. And at the same time, they announce publicly they're dealing with an active shooter in Porta Pick. That was a tweet again, though, wasn't it? Uh, I'm not sure, but he was already out of Porta Pick at the time. So it's like, why the fuck are you telling people that? Right. I don't know. Um, at 9 a.m., the RCMP finally released Gabriel Wartman's name to the public. Um, and they said he was, and still said that he was in Porta Pick when he wasn't. So I just don't get this here. Uh, Chris Wartman sets fire to the house he was staying in after he killed the couple and the dog. And then he goes and shoots a neighbor. I mean, like we said, he's dressed up like a fucking cop and shit. So she's like trying to see what the fuck's going on. Right. She just walks up, just shoots her, doesn't give a shit. Like, I don't fucking know you at all. Like, yeah, I mean, like, it's I want to know what this fight him and his old lady had that was so bad. He just right. like, I'm going to go kill the fucking world. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. 
and set a bunch of fires too. Yeah. Um, so now he's heading back to Port of Pick on Route Four. It's about nine thirty a.m. He shoots and kills another victim, a woman who's walking down the road in Wentworth Valley. Um, he tries to gain entry into the home of another couple uh, he knew in the town of Glenholm. But they recognized him and didn't let him yeah. in the house, which I thought was kind of funny. And they're like, oh, they looking for you, boy. <laughs> yeah, and he tried to trick them by uh, telling them to open the door, but they refused and called the cops instead. So, Hell yeah. I did see, or maybe I heard, I was listening to something, and I heard of a town that was something nation and I started laughing <laughs> and I meant to write it down and I didn't, but I don't know if you caught that. I didn't know. Some town in this general area was two words and it was the last was nation. That's fucking thought, great. That's funny because of Shaw back. Right. Nation, so. All right. So Joey, I know the RCMP told the police departments in Nova Scotia, he's wearing a police uniform. Um, but you know, those two that didn't let him in, they were fucking lucky, man. Yeah, I, I don't know. If you know that there's something, an active shooter going on, something like that, you got to be on the fucking, on your best fucking behavior and right. be about your P's and Q's now. If this dude fucking shows up, you know, if there's something going on in my fucking little ass town, it's fucking crazy. And one one person comes knocking on my door and he's dressed as a cop. But you recognize him and you know he's not a cop. But so that's even, why they were probably if I like, didn't fuck recognize you. Him. Right. Even if I didn't, if I saw the police uniform or whatever, there's only one of him. Fuck you. I'm not letting you in. I'm calling the police station. Right. I'm exactly. going to have more involved right. because there's some fucking crazy motherfucker out here. Sure. Good so, point. Yeah. You just got to, you have to be fucking situational awareness. You know yeah, what I'm saying? And they're never coming to your house just one when there's some situation going on. Yeah. yeah that's That does seem odd. But, you know, some people were caught off guard. For well, sure. and some people you don't know. I mean, he, that's that's that house. He could have went to another house where the person was so far frightened by what was going on. So they relieved. Just opened the that door it, fast as right. shit. Like, oh, right. please come save me. Right. And fucking killed the shit out of him. Yeah. Now, Shane, did he have like a hit list? I mean, what was his... What was the method to the madness here on who he decided to shoot, do you know? Yeah, he, he got kind of a mental hit list. You know, nothing officially written down, of course, but, you know, he was what they call an injustice collector. So whether that's real or perceived injustices, he would he would take a mental note of people that he felt had dissed him, you know, even for the slightest and most petty of things. And, and he held on to those grudges. So I think he must have just been seething with it, with it eating at his soul, but... I think some of the people were just in the way or had witnessed him in, on his rampage. And another thing is he didn't like to see people happy. So that, that could have something to do with his scorched uh, earth policy, you know. And Literally, yeah. Yeah, and they're not saying who, but based on what his girlfriend said and the direction he was going, the RCMP have said that there are two other people of interest that he think might have been his targets as well that he didn't get to. Oh, wow. Hmm. Really? Interesting. So, Joey, I know the RCMP told the police departments in Nova Scotia. Uh, I'm sorry, I just said that question already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Wartman actually made two traffic stops posing as a police officer, killed the drivers and occupants in each one, only a short distance apart, which is fucked up. Uh, one woman he killed just found out she was pregnant. Yeah, Absolutely so that's another murder right there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, finally, it's just after 10.15 a.m., the RCMP sent out a tweet, again with the fucking tweets, I don't get this, about the fact Wartman was in a police uniform and police car. Um, I just don't understand why they were using that medium Dude, yeah. uh, like, to let people know. I don't know. even know. I don't have Twitter. I mean, I think I have one, but I haven't used it in fucking forever. I know. I haven't used mine in like, quite a while. What, like older fucking like 80s or whatever right. people like that have fucking twitter yeah, right none of them no right. right. <laughs> even if i did have it i'd have the notification turned off yeah <laughs> i mean i could it's see like, sending them out but send out that tv radio i mean like right. all of the fucking above <laughs> yeah. why would you just well, pick out one thing like why didn't they do a fucking tiktok video about I mean, it? Yeah. are you fucking <laughs> kidding me with this shit i mean seriously yeah, yeah oh, i mean it's fucking stupid man i, I mean just... 
And y'all, wow. y'all got that shit on your phone too, right? The fucking like Amber Alerts and shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, we're going to play. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I've got this uh, sound by, speaking of that, I've got it set up later, but we're going to do it now. I'm going to play this, and you guys can blame Shane for this annoying <laughs> fucking sound, but we're talking about, you know, on your phone or whatever you device, Amber you got alerts, the Amber Alerts. Weather. You get fucking weather alerts. Weather alerts. We have something similar here in the U.S., but I'm going to play for you. The one from Canada. So, oh my on. God! Yeah, that's great. <laughs> he said, "Yeah, that's yeah. great." So, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if you would have got that shit on your phone, because this happened in 2020, so this right. is technology that is available. Then maybe some people would have known, but just doing it with a tweet, I just don't fucking understand it. It's absolutely fucking nuts. Um, so I just don't get it. Um, it seems like they should have been doing more than, than that. Okay. Now I saw an interview with the family and one of the drivers that Wartman shot and they said the police gave them back her car and they found several shells in the car and parts of her on the ceiling. Yeah. Just fucked up. Thanks for giving me that back. Yeah. And, I mean, the yeah. shells, I mean, that's evidence because they had said he shot her from away from the car, but that but showed that sh- he was in the right? car. The gun was in the car when he shot her, yeah. and the RCMP didn't tell him that. So Yeah, that was a rough part of the uh, documentary. Yeah, for sure. Now, to add insult to injury, two RCMP officers mistakenly shot at an emergency worker at a fire station that was... <laughs> Set up as a shelter for port of pick victims. I mean, they luckily missed they missed luckily. this dude, right? But they just jump out the car like blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I mean, goddamn. Uh, they would later see Wartman on video in the town of Truro uh, t- at 10.30 a.m. Millbrook, there it is, Chris. Millbrook, Millbrook First Nation. <laughs> so First Nation. <laughs> so I don't know what you think about that. Shit. That's right. I forgot I did see it. Uh, soon after that, um, and here's the town that I love. I actually had to hear it pronounced on Google to make sure I said it right. At 1050, they're in the town of Shubanekity. I mean, that is just a fucking <laughs> awesome name for a fucking town. You know, wow. first time I read it, I read it wrong, and I, I was reading it Shubenicide. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, Shubanekity, Shubanekity, that is just great. Um, I love the the great uh, Canadian towns. Uh, England's got some really good dudes. Australia. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, they're all over the place, but man, Canadians got some good fucking small town names. That's a good one there, Shubanekity, so... Got to be my favorite one so far. Probably some badass weed comes out of Shuba Deck. I'm guessing something, <laughs> something over there. Go to the website and see if the right. who their most notable uh, celebrity is that came Hell out of yeah. Shuba Nekity, right? Uh, Chris, another officer gets into a head-on collision with Wartman. She engages him in gunfire, but he kills her. Man, this and one was fucked up. Takes her gun and everything, and did he set both cars on fire? I yeah. believe so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. What did he end up driving, though? That was uh, like... Well, he winds up getting a couple different vehicles here. Yeah, yeah. he's going he's, through. So like he's out of the car. Yeah. I never saw. Where does he keep getting the fucking uh, the shit to start the fires? Does he have gas with him? Whenever he didn't start I'm not sure. Fire? I'm not sure. I, I, like, <laughs> did he just have fucking 20-ounce bottles of fucking gasoline on him? Yeah, I don't know. Unless Weird. he's just lighting it with a like a lighter. I, I have no I, idea. I did. Because, it's a good because I mean, I've seen other cases where people have tried to set the cars on fire to destroy evidence. And it don't always work like people think it will. Sure. It'll burn a piece of the seed or something. Well, yeah, because they try to make them fire retardant. Right, and this motherfucker was torching this shit. Right, that's true. Like... When fucking hairspray fucking and a lighter, COVID I don't started know. Started fucking doing shit. Didn't he start like stockpiling like gas? And yeah, he was a prepper. Or... You know, he was yeah. hardcore. So he probably had some lighter fluid or something right. on him. Lord yeah. only knows. But yeah. he was a prepper, so he was he was prepped. He no, was I ready. figured, but I just never saw anything uh, specific about it. I was curious about. Yeah, that's a good point. 
Now, Joey Wartman shoots another person who's trying to help the second cop that he killed, and then he takes off in that's her SUV. The other vehicle, yeah. So that's the one. So this guy is just fucking all over the place, man. Yeah, he, like Shane was saying, I mean, he don't want to see anybody happy, so the last thing he wants to see is somebody helping the person he just killed. Right. So fuck you, too. I'm fucking taking you out. I mean, it, yeah, his, his reign of terror was fucking... It, it was... Uh, it wasn't like planned out, like specifically who all was going to be killed. Obviously, some, but, but not all. Right, not at all. But he obviously wasn't very picky either, right. because if he saw somebody in the vicinity, he was going to take a fucking shot at him. Yeah, it seems like there should be a version of Grand Theft Auto, yeah. fucking Wartman, yeah. fucking version of this shit, because that's what it seems like. Um, so it's now just after 11 a.m. So this is just at about the 13 hour mark. Uh, RCMP let the public know that Wartman was in a different vehicle now. So I can't even imagine what this must have been like for these people going, what the fuck are you guys doing? Right. They're not used to crime. Definitely not like this. I mean, these are towns of 100 people. I mean, we know what that's like. Here in the Midwest, I mean, there's a lot of these little towns. They're not used to some crazy shit like this. Right. Wartman would return, and of course, I had to say it one more time, Shubenekity, okay, (laughs) and kill another woman in her home. Uh, This is someone that he knew. Uh, He changed his clothes there, and then he steals her Mazda, and he's seen at 11.30 a.m. on Highway 102 in Milford, Uh, Many have questioned why the police didn't set up barricades to avoid him going from town to town. So Shane, I mean, roadblocks. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like it's just one error after another. But finally, Shane, this shit comes to an end. And how does that go down? Well, the car he took, it it luckily it starts running low on gas. And you, you can't imagine that's really it kind of had to have pissed him off. You so, know he wasn't happy. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah. He pulls into the Irving Big Stop Circle K gas station at Enfield. And just so happens a couple members of the RCP tactical support team are pulling in at exactly the same time to get gas. Now, they don't notice him at first. And, you know, it's really no surprise that there was a screw up and they had the wrong vehicle description and they had him heading in a different direction. Jesus but, Christ. Yeah, one of the officers then notices a guy bleeding behind the wheel. He gets a good look at the guy's face and, and recognizes him. And uh, Gabriel sees them, see him, and he starts to raise his gun and the RCMP officers just open fire on him, killing him. Just unload on him. Yeah. Just unload on him. They actually have security camera footage from the gas station on uh, YouTube if you wanted to see it. Oh, fuck yeah. I have not checked that out. So finally, this shit is over. 13 hours since it started. Wartman responsible for the deaths of 22 innocent people. He also killed the two dogs, injured two others, and a handful of people were injured that survived. Um, plus all the fucking fires. I mean, this guy was like a one-man wrecking crew. I mean, I'll um, go back to Killdozer. I think he did more damage, like, personally than the fucking Killdozer. Oh, like, uh, monetarily. Yeah, like, fucking... But, I mean, this is across the pond and shit, but the F- Anders fucking Brevik in Norway... Right. I mean, that dude killed 77 people. Yeah, right? that was really bad. Yeah. yeah. In, in a different sense, but at the same way, he did use the fact that some people thought that he was a uh, policeman or somebody there to help them. Right, right. To lure them in to shoot them, too. Yeah, right? it's fucked up. We're definitely going to do that case. Um, but, you know, you can't help but find the flaws in how the RCMP handled this one. Um, you know, why didn't they get the alert out? in more ways than a fucking Twitter. Um, So everyone knew what was going on. I mean, like Chris said, I mean, people that are 70, 80 years old are not going to have fucking Twitter. I have a Twitter account, but like Shane said, I don't have the fucking notification set. I haven't used it in years. (laughs) No desire to use it. Right. But, you know, it just blows my mind. It just seems like, you know, who knows if that cop at that gas station wouldn't have recognized him. This shit could have gone on for a, a lot longer. I mean, this right. guy was not looking like he was ready to stop anytime soon. But, I mean, Chris, in general, I mean, what do you have to say about the whole hey, response like, here? 
like uh, we were saying earlier, they get trained different to stop the fucking shooter. And if you know you got him there, fucking take him down. Like, especially if he's reaching for a gun, which you know he was going to. But at the same time, those other cops are shooting at that fucking other worker thinking right. that was him. Thinking and the dude's him. like, in my head, I 100% thought it was him. Right. But they got the right guy, obviously. I mean, he recognized the dude's already fuck, fucking bleeding and shit. So, right. like, I think they did the right thing knowing it was 100% him. Just take him, dude. Like, oh, for sure. Just for take sure. Him. Yeah. It doesn't look like they tried to take him alive. That's for sure. No, no I mean, not. cops are trained to shoot to kill. I mean, you're not trained to shoot to wound. That's a yeah. conversation I've been in many times. My dad used to teach at the New York State Police Academy. Uh, the uh, urban warfare type uh, courses that they take going from room to room and all the different, you know, rules and how you're supposed to shoot center mass and shoot to kill. You're not there to shoot to wound. So um, now, Joey, later, the police would learn a lot more about Wartman. And we talked about some of this with Shane about that rough upbringing. I mean, he definitely had a, a rough childhood. We've talked about this with other. You yeah. know, killers we've discussed. I mean, you know, his fucking family members themselves is fucking... His dad was a fucking criminal. Brought him up, like, seeing that, basically, fucking... Right. He doesn't do good even sociably in, like, school settings or any of that. He's picked on growing up and shit. I don't know what the extent of that was, but he definitely didn't have a great upbringing. And then, you know, then he's left with his grandparents and... uh you know, then his parents just move away. They like basically <laughs> drop him off on the stoop, basically right. and take off. And um, they had another son, but gave him up for adoption. They didn't even tell Gabriel. He didn't find out until he was forty years old. Yeah, that's fucked. Up. So I don't know what kind of impact that had, but right, we've seen that before. With yeah, and he was in the U.S. for a while, then went yeah. back to Canada. Um, but he was fifty-one at the time of the rampage. He was born in sixty-eight, so he was a year. He's a year older than me. Um, he did go to college for a while. Did you see this guy? He became a mortician for yeah. a bit. Right. Um, and then became a denturist. Yeah. I looked that <laughs> up. I was like, denturist? I, I never heard that term before, but it's a person that takes the molds and stuff to get dentures Get me my made. new teeth. <laughs> so we always give Chris, or Joey gives, I, I don't like doing it, but Joey picks on Chris a lot. We had uh, your brother Michael here I on say, Saturday. Michael's taking it now. We were yeah, all we were no all teeth. giving him shit, but they were both laughing about oh, it, yeah. so it was funny. But you know, so he was very successful. He had these two clinics, one in Halifax, one in Dartmouth. Very successful. Like he was worth like a couple million or something. He shit, was. Right? He was worth couple two million. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, unbelievable. Jesus, I mean, it really is. And then it like he, uh, that's just what was on the books because he did. De- didn't want to pay taxes, so we yeah. do that shit like under the table and shit too, yeah. right? So Water yeah. under the table, shit. Dentures under the table. Yeah. Right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where my old ones are? Shit. <laughs> so another thing I saw that he had put in his high school yearbook that he wanted to be an RCMP officer, and uh, some people speculated that maybe it was a grudge, you know, with the RCMP, was that he wasn't a police officer like they were. And we've seen this like police worship, like with Kemper, Kemper yeah. and some of the other cases we've done this like obsession with the police. Ken Bianchi. And shit. Yeah, Bianchi. As a matter of fact, I think he came up in a conversation um, about this. So, or maybe that was, Unta, I'm thinking about Unterweger. Uh, these cases all yeah, blur. Right, right. <laughs> um, I did see an interview with a woman who knew him. And she talked about his obsession with firearms and that he wanted to shoot a cop. So he had been telling people. He wants you know, to be a cop and wants to shoot one. Shoot yeah. yourself, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand, right? <laughs> but you that's save for everybody real. That a lot was a grief. documented thing that he said that he had wanted to kill a police officer. Yeah, for, right. yeah, for real. Like, that's they knew that. Right. It, it was out there. It wasn't right. like a secret or no, not he had at all. It written in some manifesto nobody saw or anything. Right. Yeah, he was openly telling people yeah. he wanted to kill a cop. Um, he also had issues with alcohol and run-ins with the police. Um, I saw that he assaulted a 15-year-old kid in front of one of the <laughs> yeah, clinics. Too. Oh, so he that's beat the fun. shit out of that kid. He, <laughs> he was in the hospital. Yeah, that's fucked up. Him with a crowbar. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's and right. Why did he do that again? 
What did the kid do? The kid do? was standing there waiting for the bus, and then <laughs> yeah, he wasn't doing yeah. shit. One ran out drunk and just attacked him. Oh wow! <laughs> and he did, he got a little bit of jail time for that, right? But nothing ridiculous. But didn't he do a little? I, I don't think there was even jail time for that. I no, think it was just something like a probation or something like that. <laughs> yeah, like I said, this dude was worth so much money. He's buying his way out of shit. Trying to kill right, him at first. Right. Yeah. So there were quite a few complaints to the police about him. Nothing was done. We've heard that kind of stuff before. Uh, he owned several pieces of property, several buildings, three different corporations. He's worth two and a half, two point one million. Canadian dollars and did the conversion. That's 1.6 million in U.S. So holy shit! I mean, this guy's worth some money. And Shane, I mean, it's just it's crazy to think of somebody that has all of that would have been that hell bent on doing this that they would ruin their life and the lives of so many people, so many innocent people. Yeah, well, we, we really don't know Warman's reasoning. You know, when he had first kidnapped his girlfriend, uh, she had tried to talk him down, talk him out of it, but he was he had his mind made up at that point. He's like, no, this is it. This is game over, man. It's too late. This is fucking happening now. There's no going back. Wow. And uh, whatever it was, I believe it was a long, long time in the making. Many different reasons all blended together in his sick mind, that, and he somehow concluded that, this was the correct course of action to take. Right. And it's very, very different from other uh, spree killing mass murders. He didn't have a web spite spouting hatred and right. didn't have a crazy manifesto to try and no legitimize ma his base violence. Right. You know, no and manifesto. Didn't leave a note or anything behind, fucking, right? No. Nothing. Well, wow. One thing, he was balls deep in the whole COVID conspiracy and great reset. And I, I'm pretty sure that helped push him over the edge oh, a bit because wow. he thought yeah. the world was ending. Yeah. You know, he thought it was over. Yeah. Wow. You know, but I think it was a slow fuse and a lifelong burn that just finally went boom. And it's wow. for the aftermath. I mean, this is still playing out. And hopefully this mass casualty commission and, and ongoing investigation can shed a bit of light onto what his motives are so we can try to get a bit better of an understanding of this type of you know extreme violent psycho psychopathy and hopefully law enforcement will take a long hard look at their deficiencies and make some operational improvements and you know, our prime I minister so. actually got into a bit of shit about this. He was really? trying to influence the investigation for political reasons, oh, all with good intentions, of course. Of course but, <laughs> right. You know, he tried to influence the investigation, and, you know, you can't do that. Right. No. No, and unfortunately, this shit doesn't happen in a bubble. So the politics and everything gets involved, and yeah. it's just not good. But, uh, yeah, definitely keep us posted on this one, Shane. I definitely would like to hear if anything develops from that commission. Uh, would be interested to hear, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's unbelievable to think something like this happens in Canada. Um, and we saw a terrible one in Norway, as we pointed out. Port Arthur in Tasmania. And we hear about these often in the United States. There was just the one recently up near Chicago. So, I mean, these are just very routine, and it's fucked up. I think a lot of this is more of a mental health crisis than a gun problem. I mean, I'm all for background checks and making sure people that are ill don't get their hands on guns. Shit, I'm ill as fuck, son. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is that there's loopholes, there's cracks that will always be impossible to stop. Unfortunately, the criminals are always going to be able to get the guns, 100%. and that's where the debate lies. I'm not going to get political here. I despise political shit anymore. That's why I don't watch any professional sports anymore. I almost don't watch any news. I used to immerse myself in it, and I found that my life is a lot fucking happier because of it. So I just can't deal with this shit. I only watch what I need to, but I try to disconnect from it, especially when politics gets involved, which is almost every single fucking time. Right. Um, but Keep out is, of politics and religion. That's true. 100%, that's true. <laughs> man. That's true. It's two things we don't talk about around here. So, so, guys, anything to add to this one? Anything you want to bring up? Uh, not me personally. Well, I was telling you, you Pete, I wanted to add a little bit of a conspiracy to the mix here. Yeah, if I go, could. Ahead. So, go ahead, dude. So when, uh, when COVID hit, Gabriel, he started getting all of his finances in order. Like, see, he thought the world was ending. He 
he thought the banks were going to collapse. He wanted all his cash at home so he right. could be, actually bury it in his backyard. Seven hundred and fifty thousand so dollars. He... Yeah. yeah, or seven hundred and five. Wow, that's how much they found buried in his backyard. Damn, yeah, that's crazy. So he, <laughs> he used a money transfer service called Brinks to get close to half a million dollars delivered to him in cash. Now, Brinks, they're the armored security guard company. It, they move large yeah, sums got, of money between banks. We got Brinks here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, they fill the ATMs. They pick up cash yeah, and right. shit like that. So you know who else uses Brinks is the RCMP. They use Brinks when they need large sums of money to make buy or, or pay off a confidential informant. There's no paper trail. There's no noise, nosy bank tellers, anything like that. Yep. So the strange thing is that Brinks is not available for use by the general public. So Wartman, he shouldn't have been able to just call Brinks and get yep. half a million dollars in cash delivered to him. Like, there's just something wrong there. Yeah, that's fucked up. It is crazy. And he had that whole thing. Uh, they were talking about how he might have been, like, running drugs and guns across the border through Maine and shit. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. But then they fucking it, they denounced him fucking having any ties to any kind of organized crime though. Right. So very very interesting. Um, so, I go yeah. ahead, Joe. Oh, I was just gonna say they were talking more about his income because uh, <clears throat> this was literally in the news like two days ago because they were having this inquest about his his shit. Um, I'm sure Shane was watching that up there too. But, uh, you know, like he said, they found $705,000 buried in his house. Fucking, he was making, they said he was making just under $40,000 annual. His fucking, uh, and then Banfield, she made 15000 She worked at the same company. So they're making about uh, maybe under $60,000. But what he's spending and his additional fucking personal accounts, he's running two hundred and thirty two thousand dollars annually into it. Uh, uh and then another fucking hundred thousand dollars in a joint account that he shared with her, and it doesn't indicate where any of the money was coming from. And fucking they were saying uh that he had like like Shane said, he had this fucking big fear about the COVID conspiracy and that it was gonna end. So he took all his money so that he would have it in case the banks fucking shut down. Wow. But it's just that's some weird shit. It is. Yeah. yeah. A lot of greasy money. A lot of greasy money. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, and and the fact that to me, Shane, I don't know if I'm just looking into this and reading into it, but it seems that the whole reason that they're bringing all of this out is because they want some transparency to see if the fucking RCMP really was working with him. Yeah, I, I, that's what I heard too. See yeah. if he was some kind of paid informant or right. something like that. Interesting. Wow. Some kind of some kind of connection, anyways. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there because this is such a fresh case. The fifth estate documentary, though, is the one to watch on YouTube. Really, really good. It was done in Canada, but very well put together. Very difficult to watch at times because you feel for these people. I mean, right. what a terrible thing. That one guy lost his wife. I mean, they were getting ready to have a baby. I mean, just fucked up. And it's just still so fresh, honestly. Right. Like, yeah, because it's only a couple of years old. Yeah. So, oh, now, you know, it's something else that Lisa Banfield, that's his wife, right? Or yeah, what, the common I, law I, wife. I, yeah. Right, okay. So what, something else she said, too, uh, in, in this latest Inquisition was that most of his clients would pay in cash. Right, that's what I'm and saying. And that yeah. at the end of the day, she would just bring the cash upstairs to Wartman at their residence above the clinic, and that if any of them paid by check, she would cash them, and that he would have them make it out to him and not to the company. Wow. So all this shit that he's doing, plus... Tax-free. Yeah, and plus I think he also had a, he had a racket going where he was getting money sent in through PayPal, too. Yeah. Using that for an account. Wow. And so fucking he's not paying anything on that either. Right, right. Yeah, crazy. Well, like Shane gotta, said, this guy was a schemer, man. Yeah. So got a storage unit looking all kinds like breaking bad too. Shit. Right, right. <laughs> not only a storage unit, but he had little secret compartments built into his walls all over all his properties. Oh, wow. Damn. Now, Shane, you said you listened to a 13-hour podcast about this one. How was that? Yeah, it's a fucking marathon <laughs> podcast, that's for sure. Oh, I'm sure. Put out by the Global Loose Network. It's called 13 Hours, and it's 13 hours long. Very well done, com very comprehensive. They have a 
companion website with that, you know, with maps and pictures, interviews, videos. So oh, cool. you need to check out more. That's a, that's a very good one. Yeah, Hell for yeah. sure. That's awesome, man. Well, thanks, Shane, as always, for coming on and talking to us. Fuck and yeah. Talking about right some on. poutine. We had some poutine tonight, so yeah, that was yeah. awesome. Uh, was and uh, next week, though, we're going to be doing a little Shark Week episode. I'm fucking so Joey's been yeah. wanting to do this for a long time. She loves sharks. We talked about this last year right after Shark Week. And so I- this year... We tried to wait. So the the incidents that inspired the movie Jaws is what we're going to be covering. Hell the yeah. initial, uh, you know, shark attacks that happened the over several days. Yeah. So <laughs> now also I've been watching some uh, Discovery Shark shit. Yeah. And they have changed it. It is not Shark Week. Now it's Shark Best. It's four weeks fucking long. Oh damn! <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, that's cool. So uh, so this will be your last episode in the studio yes, with us for will. a while yep. uh, since you're going to be moving to Ohio. So uh, it's only fitting that we would end it with a Shark Week episode uh, for your run here in the studio. So very hey, cool. So why do they call that uh, Holy Toledo there, Joey? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> who, who says that, Chris? I, I don't on, know. On MASH. Holy Toledo. I, I don't know. I just it's not that, radar. One of them on Mash. Oh, the the Klinger, the flamboyant one. No, Klinger. No, he's ta- he always talks about the Toledo mud hits. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 But he always <laughs> brings up Toledo. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, that's where he's from he's in from the show. In, yeah. yeah, he's always talking about the Toledo mud hens. <laughs> All right. Well, Joey, you got some page a day for us. I do. I, I only got three, but they're pretty close. I was gonna say we got a lot. Of, we're at an hour and a half in at this yep. point, so it's been a longer episode. But I thought you know we covered that Wartman stuff. Oh yeah. Well, it was a good one to do. So uh, again, thanks Shane for hanging out again. Always like having you on, bro. Um, Always good times. Fuck yeah! All right, so uh, I'll do. I'll zip through the page today. Like I said, there's only three of them. They're pretty quick. Uh, <clears throat> this first one's about some Visine. So <laughs> Lana Sue Clayton, she testified in court that she had put Visine in uh, her husband's drink to make him feel uncomfortable. She never thought that it would kill him. Uh, she got voluntary manslaughter after poisoning her husband by putting eye drops in his water starting on July 19th, 2018 until his death on July 21st. Uh, Tetra Hi- <laughs> tetrahydrazoline i can never say that fucking <laughs> tetrahydrazoline which is the active ingredient in eye drops it does relieve the irritation redness by constricting the blood vessels in the eyes but it's deadly if it's ingested um she received a 25 year prison sentence and the same year there was another case uh first degree murder trial of joshua lee hensucker who was accused of killing his wife stacy by the same method so fucking visine Don't watch vi- out fucking yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've actually heard of that before. It's a vasodilator, and I saw it on CSI or Fuck Murder, yeah. She Hopes, or something like that. <laughs> Murder, <Watch out>. She <laughs> Hopes. <laughs> All right, uh, the second one, this is about Ella Watson. And Ella Watson, she was a former sex worker from Kansas who moved to the Wyoming Territory in 1886. So she meets James Averall, who's a saloon keeper, um, and they each file for a homestead in the Wyoming grasslands, and they claimed a total of 640 acres. Can you just get fucking 640 fucking acres? Insane, right? dude. Uh, unfortunately, their land was previously controlled by a powerful cattle rancher named Albert Bothwell. And he didn't want to give it up. So back then there was always these conflicts between the ranchers and the homesteaders because the ranchers had been using the land for fucking decades. Right, for their cattle. Yeah. But they really had no legal hold on it. So whenever the banks came in and started fucking selling the properties and shit. Right. But these ranchers, they don't want to give their shit up. So they often tried to discourage the homesteaders from settling on the land, usually through tactics like cutting their barbed wire or diverting their irrigation systems. But unfortunately for Watson and Averell, Bothwell was known for being particularly arrogant and volatile, and he took a more violent approach. On July 20th, 1889, Bothwell baselessly accused Watson and Averell of rustling or stealing their cows and horses, and he had five of his men abduct them from their home and hang them. The three men were later tried for murder, but were acquitted by a pro-rancher jury. Wow. Uh, A (laughs) pro-rancher jury. Yeah, they're like, oh no, they were stealing my shit. Fuck them. Get (laughs) them out of here. All right, so this is the last one I got, and uh, this is about the four abandoned children of Sagamo. Okay. You got to... 
the the children their children child A through E. <clears throat> so you got to kind of follow a little bit, but that's because especially like over this is uh, over in Asia, they don't use like the children's names at all or anything. Right. Like they, that. right. So anyway, October 1987. So there's this woman and she moves in with her new boyfriend and she leaves her four children alone in an apartment in Sagamo neighborhood of Tokyo, Japan. She gives the oldest child, a 14-year-old known as Child A, about $350 and put him in charge of his younger sisters, Child B, D, and E. The woman's third child, Child C, she had died in 1985 shortly after birth, allegedly from choking on milk. Wow. So the woman visited every few weeks to bring them food and money until January 1988 when she visited the last time to pay rent and give Child A more money. So the children stayed alone in the apartment, with Child A occasionally leaving to get food from a nearby convenience store. And police discovered them on July 17, 1988, after the landlord called to complain that the tenant hadn't paid rent in six months. So the authorities go to the place. They find Child A, B, and D alive but malnourished and living in filthy conditions. They also found the skeletal remains of Child C hidden in a closet. Oh, my God. Child E is nowhere to be found. Holy fuck. Wow. So Child A eventually admits that two of his friends had, chilled, had killed Child E after she had tried to steal food from them. Child A hit Child E, and when Child E wouldn't stop crying, his friends jumped on her, smothered the child to death. Child A and one of his friends buried her body in a forest. Her remains were never recovered. The two friends were then sent to a reform school for Child E's murder. Though Child A was likely not present at the time of the death, he was indicted for the abandonment of the body, and he was remanded to a child care facility due to the extreme circumstance of the case. On July 23, 1988, the children's mother turned herself in after extensive coverage of the incident that was on the media. Uh, she was found guilty of child abandonment and received a three-year sentence. Oh, my God. After she it. was released, she regained custody of her daughter's child, B and D. Oh Holy my God. fucking shit. It's fucking Seriously? crazy, right? Uh, Wow. Yeah. That's so that up. was page a day for today. God damn. damn. Page a day, some good shit. All right, well, we have done our share of murdering tonight. I think it's time to crank up some metal. So, Shane, what the fuck do we need to do? Well, I think it's about time we got our fucking metal on there, boys. Just because CK <laughs> has passed on, he's not done educating the masses. CK will forever be the great metal motherfucker. We're here to stomp poser ass and eradicate the planet of their kind. CK has passed the torch to us, and we will forge the fuck on. In CK's name, we will bestow metal knowledge upon all of you. Hell yeah, C fucking K, man. Great, Great metal, metal motherfucker. motherfucker. Always going to remember CK when we do this segment because this was his favorite, of course. And tonight, it's your turn, Chris. You've got the horn, so I'm passing the yeah, horns yeah, got to the you. Yeah, horns right here. Fuck Three yeah. goat horns. Hell yeah. And that means it's your turn to pick the band or whatever you well, want to talk about give me a in second. metal. Let me take this beer and wash down these Pop-Tarts real quick. There you go. So we're eating <laughs> Pop-Tarts. That's what we do when we come into metal. So if it sounds like we're eating, we are, and that's on purpose. Yeah. Fuck yeah, it is. So Fuck listeners, Pop-Tart. you guys need to get up on the fucking Pop Tart game here. We are needing some Pop Tarts. Fucking poutine and Pop Tarts, baby. Yeah, tonight poutine <laughs> and Pop Tarts for sure. So, so yeah, living, so. living like kings over here. Hell yeah, we are. So Chris, what's See, the what's tonight the deal? I got the I got the horns tonight, and I'm gonna I decided I'm gonna do uh, extermination dismemberment. Ah. Uh, not going to be very long. They don't have a whole lot out as far as albums and whatnot, but just figure I'd give you a little rundown on what they got going on. But uh, they're a fucking slam slash brutal death metal fucking band fucking formed in 2009 in Minx. What is it? What is it, Cashman? Belarus. Belarus. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But then, uh, Belarus. Yeah, Belarus. Belarus. <laughs> <laughs> and Minx Belarus, in, yeah, in 2009, uh, they were formed by, uh, and I don't know why I picked these bands from overseas with fucking band member names that I can't fucking Crazy bring. ass fucking like, names. How, what the fuck am I thinking, dude? Yeah. So anyway, they were formed in 2009, fucking Belarus, by, uh, oh my God, Arizny Kavalichuk. I'm going to go with that. Kovalichuk. And uh, he played guitar, and uh, Valerie Kozahemako. 
on vocals and they they started out themselves uh and they put out a 2009 demo uh and then as the years as they started uh getting their first album going or whatever they brought on a couple other obviously more band members and so we got victor uh ranashevic and uh on a uh, bass and uh Vladisov Martisov. God damn it. <laughs> I, that, I know that's not how it's pronounced, but they brought him on playing playing uh, drums. And they fucking uh, put out their first uh, full-length album in uh, 2000... Uh, what year was it? 2010, fucking called uh, Butcher Basement on fucking Imbecile Entertainment Records. And then uh, in 2012, they put out a four-way split called uh drown through four ways of vomiting with uh begging for incest uh gratuperation and gut fed S- uh, fucking love split albums with other fucking badass bands oh, yeah. fucking begging for incest you know slams dude yeah. fuck yeah and then uh in 2013 the vocalist uh val i'm just saying that what i, I think i can pronounce <laughs> valerie he left he left the band in 2013 so uh they didn't have a vocalist and then it and that was after their second full length was in 2013 called uh serial serial herbicide jesus christ why do i do this to myself (laughs) and and they put that out on uh amputated amputated vein records from japan they put out some pretty fucking dope ass shit all the time that album was fucking huge yeah that like that album to this day like you read about it and motherfuckers are still getting behind it like like hearing that album like wait what the fuck where'd this fucking come from man and fucking so then in uh 2016 uh vladislav fucking the drummer he became the new fucking vocalist and uh they got dude's name's dennis nice. uh, all right <laughs> as a drummer they got a dude named dennis pull you on i'm guessing that's right to on drums so like like I said, this is going to be short. There's really not a lot. Uh, and then, like, they're still, act- they're still an active band or whatever. And since uh, since the fucking, the Serial Herbicide, they've put out a couple singles in 2018. They put out Omnivore. In 2021, they put out a Proto Nemesis, which you guys are going to hear a little bit of right. tonight. And then uh, just this year, they put, put out the single Agony Incar- Incarnate. So they're obviously still active. So hopefully we get something, a new full length album coming out of them soon. And yeah, that that's basically their fucking current lineup is I'm not going to go through all the names yeah. again. Oh my God. I, why do I do this to myself? I don't know, man. <laughs> Fuck. But our, yeah, the artist, he, he's a uh, guitar and backing vocals and Victor's on bass. Vladislav is on lead vocals and Dennis is on drums and they're uh, like I said currently active and they're on Unique Leader Records right now fucking okay. and if you're in uh, Europe they got a couple shows coming up in August in a uh, couple in Italy and uh, I can't remember where else but they got a couple shows coming up in Europe but, but yeah that's fucking that's basically the layout of what you can get from those I looked through a couple things trying to find stuff but when I decided who I was going to do, I was hoping there'd be a little more, but damn it. <laughs> but yeah, they're, right. they're, they're fucking heavy ass fucking band. They just fucking crush. Yeah. Fucking check them out, man. Fucking. That's cool. And my lost classic, definitely getting nasty, going back a ways to the classic album from Possessed, Seven Churches. Oh, yeah. Wow. I remember hearing that for the first time. Like, what the fuck is this? Hell yeah. Uh, when it came out. And, uh, wasn't a huge fan of it back then because I wasn't into that type of metal at that time. But I remember thinking like, man, this is just so different than anything else, you know? Right. And then as I started getting into heavier stuff and listening to some more death metal, go back. And I know Possessed is kind of considered a thrash band to some. Right. But, um, you know, vocal-wise, definitely more death metal, I think. Yeah. So... Uh, so yeah, possess seven churches, just fucking nasty. Larry oh, yeah. Wand on guitar. That's right. Primus. That's right. Primus. Yep. All right. So what has everybody been listening to, Chris? What about you, lately? Uh, obviously, extermination, dismemberment. 
I was listening to some Volvectomy today. And again, like, I just play music. I don't really, I just listen to music, man. Like, whatever. That's cool. Joey, what about you? Uh, <clears throat> Jam and Prophecy. Fucking from Texas. Jam yeah, that was good my- shit. When, it, when you were playing it the other day, I was like, dude, it sounds like a fetus and fucking di- uh, yeah. deicide together. I was like, God damn. Texas Dave showed me <clears throat> basically prophecy and devourment at the same exact time. And I liked them both. And I thought devourment was heavier, but I liked prophecy more just because I thought they were like musically a little more right. intricate. But yeah, so I was jamming that. I was jamming uh, in the car. I got the Metallica 595 EP Garage Days. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, probably one of the best cover albums of all time. Well, it's an EP, but I mean fucking huge talk no about, it's good stuff man. talk about taking some music and making it your own you know uh but yeah fucking basically that some lividity crowd trooper cool yeah. i've been jamming this uh, german band i think i mentioned mentioned them last week trader yes uh the album exile to the surface is the new one i've been talking with their bass player lorenz and we've got an interview lined up for Sunday the 31st Fucking right. of this month. And so they're going to probably be my next uh, feature uh, metal that I do. Uh, Trader, thrash, uh, up straight up thrash, uh, created Sodom Destruction style. So that German sound, uh, really, really like those guys. And I even hear a little bit of the old Metallica stuff, like yeah. Kill Em All, when I hear these guys. But very cool. Also, uh, the band in, in Human Condition just came out with a new one called Fear Sick, very wicked. Yeah. And uh, Battlegrave, uh, a band from Australia that I really like. It's a two man project. Uh, they brought in a drummer. Holy shit! On this one, this new one, Cavernous Depths, uh, unfucking believable drumming. The whole thing is just straight up insane. Uh, very wicked reminds me of misery index the drumming's that good yeah. uh, reminds me of misery index uh sean ferrugia of in malice's wake did the cover uh artwork yeah, for that this artwork's so sick unbelievably good so sean does like oil painting and then they take pictures and use it that way absolutely unbelievable uh, but yeah, they've released three i bought the downloaded the album pre ordered it off a of band camp and it comes with three songs now and then the rest Friday. Right. And so the first three that I heard are just straight up ridiculous. So really, really good stuff. Thrash, uh, definitely death metal in there too, but a kind of a merge of the two. Uh, really, really good. All right. Now, I know that the metal world was thrown on its fucking ear last week with the announcement that Phil and Rex are going to go out as Metallica with Zach you Wilde. Mean Pantera? I'm sorry, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> As Pantera, yes, with Zach Wilde and Charlie Benante on drums. What do you guys think about this? I mean, a lot of people are all fired up. I was never a huge Pantera fan. I mean, I thought they were cool, but they didn't blow my mind like some people. But right. what do you think, Chris? I mean, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, they say, well, there's no original members, but there's other bands. Guar, I mean, there's several. Right, Right. Sepultura, like, it's cool. I think I I have the same idea that Joey's probably going to say, fucking, I think Mike should have just kept playing guitar from the Illegals. And fucking, I think it's cool. I'd probably check out a show. I got nothing against it, but. Yeah, I don't really have anything against it either. I know some people like, oh, it's a. It's a money grab, it's money and grab, it's this. Like I mean, blah, blah, blah. Joey, what do you have to say about it? I mean, it might be a little bit of a money grab. I mean, why not? If you can do it, do That's it. That's what I'm saying. I yeah? Mean, you're fucking, you're that dude, you know, from that band, and you can fucking do it. But, yeah, like Chris was saying, I mean, for me, the Illegals have been playing Vulgar Display of Pantera for years now. Right. They've been headlining fests everywhere. So playing you've Pantera got, songs. Uh, Mike DeLeon on guitar, who's fucking phenomenal. Right. He's not Zach Wild. I get that. Zach Wild was Dimes' buddy. Um, Zach Wild's an amazing name. guitarist, and he's a big name. Right. Charlie Benante is a big name, but I mean, for me, as far as talent wise and fucking having the heart in it, the guy that's been fucking playing all the dime shit for the last three years, right? And, and playing it as perfect as he can. Yeah. Not to mention uh, 
Joey on drums too. It, to me, the illegals could have just been fucking brought Rex in. You yeah. know what I'm saying did a tour. I don't. I don't necessarily agree with it being called a Pantera reunion. I don't, yeah, I don't say. agree with that. You're playing Pantera songs and it's you and Rex and that's cool. Right. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, talk shit on Phil and they want to hate on him and you know, oh, this should be for the Abbott brothers and the money should go to their families and maybe it should, but. Th- with me, whenever I was growing up, I didn't listen to Pantera when they were a power metal band. I started listening to them whenever they got Phil and he brought an right, attitude exactly. to the music that made me fucking relate with what he was doing. And to me, when he jumped in, he made the other uh, the other members fucking bring out the heavier side of themselves. So, I agree. So I think I think he's a he's a huge part of the fucking what Pantera was. So if he wants to do something, that's cool. But yeah, I don't I don't necessarily say it's a reunion. Though. Yeah, I don't. I like I said, I really I never disliked them. They just never rang my bell, so to speak. So, ring, but it's ring, cool. Ring. <laughs> so yeah, I just thought I'd bring that up yeah. and see what you guys no, thought about that. I mean, that that's fucking the talk all over the place. Exactly. It is. Yeah. It really is. Uh. Something I wanted to bring up in metal real fast, too. Uh, yeah. There's this foundation. I just wanted to fucking plug them real quick. And they're called No Guts, No Glory. And you can look them up and check them out. But uh, there's a foundation, and they go around to, like, fucking Metal Fest and things like that, too. Uh, I think they're going to be a Dynamo Metal Fest, which is that's the one that's happening this weekend. Or... Right. Anyway, this company is awesome. What they do is they collect band shirts and... Uh, music shirts and things like that and they take them and then they sell them and then the money that they get from that they use it to to uh to make a wish come true basically for a terminally ill person right on uh have a have a show for them uh bring them to a fucking concert to a band they really want to see they've done a lot and they've been out for that's cool quite a while but it's just really cool so if like if you, if you hear about no guts no glory if, if they're in your area fucking uh if you go to a fest where they're gonna be at and you got some fucking shirts just sitting just around toss that don't them fit so. you no more or whatever fucking give them to them guys right that's Sport cool that man shit. that is really cool uh, we've been talking about this lately, you know, bands, if you're out there, labels, you want to get us a band to check out, uh, send it to Pete at MurderMetalMayhem.com. There's no guarantee we'll listen to or we'll, that we'll play it, but we will check it out. And if we dig it, maybe we'll do a review. Maybe yeah. we'll feature the band or interview them. So just send it in. We'll check it out. And if you want to go old school, send it to us to... Murder Metal Mayhem, P.O. Box 554, Hayworth, Illinois, 61745. You want to throw in some stickers, maybe a box of Pop-Tarts, you know, there might, you go. might move like them up on the list a little <laughs> bit with the Pop-Tarts. Right? I'm also okay. going to say, because I said the last two weeks, I'm going to make it a priority to get that fucking punky intro for my the Gormager mixtape and fucking post it on the group page. I haven't done it yet, and then it's because I have fucking, my internet has just been fucking gone. Oh, wow. So I haven't really had no internet to fuck with it, and my phone's browser's too fucking old, so it won't fucking let me link the fucking... Oh, uh, shit. Anyway, long story short, I swear I'll get it up to you guys. It's fucking funny, so... That's cool, man. Yeah, I definitely want to hear it. I keep meaning to, to go check it yeah. out, too, and forget. So, yeah, please post it so I remember, and can I can check it out. Now, Joey, you got the horns next. Uh, I know we've talked about what you're going to do, but did you want to unveil that to the listeners? Yeah, I'll tell them. Fuck it. Uh, I do a lot of Illinois bands and, you know, did a couple other bands. But next week's my last week in studio with these dudes, on the regular at least. And uh, I'm going to do my own band, Goremonger. Uh, Fuck yeah. I'm not big on talking about my own shit too much just because it's fucking, it weirds me out and shit, but um, I think it would be cool, especially for some of our listeners that fucking know what I'm about and everything else and anybody else has checked out my other interviews and stuff, but to give you all a fucking, like, actual in-depth history of fucking Goremonger. So yeah, that's it'd be pretty cool. cool to have a couple little fucking stories in there and fucking make you guys laugh. I'm yeah, I'm yeah. sure it'll be good. I'm sure it'll be good. All right, uh, our 666 Club, that's our Patreon. We appreciate all the support there. If you're interested in helping us out, it's 3 bucks a month, and uh, you get the content a day early. You get the episodes or the uh, interviews as soon as I get them done, literally. 
Um, you get things that nobody else gets, bonus episodes, that sort of thing. So patreon.com slash murder metal mayhem. And uh, it's just a good way to help us out and Fucking get some is. cool shit in the process. All right. Well, we have done plenty of metal tonight. So, Joey, what the fuck do we need to do? Let's get our mayhem on. Workman human skeet shooting. How can I help you, eh? Oh, uh, uh, um, yes, I, uh, I seen your ad in the paper, and I was like, uh, what the hell is human skeet shooting? Is this, is this even real? You guys, uh, make some kind of typo? No, 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 that is not a typo, my good man. We provide a unique Canadian experience here at Workman human skeet shooting. Oh, and here, right now, we're running a summer special, eh? You get an order of real Canadian poutine for each customer that mentions Murder Metal Mayhem when you arrive. Oh, yeah, it's a guaranteed good time, eh? So, uh, you guys actually shoot real people. It's not a joke. This is really what you do. You shoot real people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're real, alive, and screaming. Well, of course, till you shoot them dead, eh? You can also pose with your choice of victim for a special keepsake photo of your time here, huh? Oh, and uh, we can also melt down the shell casings and make an assortment of custom handcrafted jewelry if you like. Plus, don't forget that free poutine, eh? Oh, that's the exactly fucked up shit I was looking for. I knew I could not think my Canadian friends would let me down. Thank you very much. Crazy. That's how it goes, motherfucker. <laughs> Jeez, that's such, oh my god that's in such bad taste <laughs> it is in such bad taste holy shit oh we were gonna god. do that one last round and we had just had an incident i think it was the uvalde one in texas and i just uh. couldn't bring myself to write in that script and then a little time passed, and then we're getting ready to do this, and I'm like, man, we really need to do a Wartman one and have Shane involved, yeah, and so yeah. I was like, fuck it. You know, look, when are we not going to have a fucking shooting, right. for God's sake? Look, so, so you just got to do it. Y'all, it's the just shootings are not the funny part. No. But. Of course not. Dark humor right. is funny. Trying to find like, some fun gotta, in a fucked up yeah, world like yeah. that is is okay, so. It's Murder Metal Mayhem. Maybe before that, Extermination Dismemberment, and that song was called Pro, what was that, Chris? Proto Nemesis. Pro Nemesis. So brutal shit, that's for sure. So uh so yeah, so there you go. Chris, good segment. Nah, I did what I could. Yeah, I mean, you know. These fucking guys are so heavy, though, dude. Like, me and Cash were talking the other day, though, that something about his fucking uh, kick drums. Just, yeah, just, they're tight. Yeah. Yeah, I was so I mean, upset because I was supposed to see them at Chicago Domination Fest for whatever reason, uh, passport shit, or something didn't work out, and they couldn't oh. make it over, and they were like one of the biggest ones I wanted to see there. Right? Oh, wow. It's like, always. <laughs> yeah. yeah, always something that... It, it's, it's always like the band I want to see that doesn't make it. Right, it's crazy. right. <laughs> so I definitely think CK would, would enjoy hearing us do the metal segment oh, the way yeah. we've been doing it. So. Yes. All right, so we are in Mayhem tonight, and I told you guys I had a little bit of a story. We were talking about uh, some funny things people say at, like, the worst time type of stuff. 
And I brought up a, a story I remembered. My son was recently telling the story, um, but I remember it. I was a pretty young kid at the time, maybe 10 or 11. So I barely remember it, but my parents have told it so many times, it's just ingrained in my mind. All right, so as you guys know, I'm from the Bronx. So you watch movies about, like, Italians in the Bronx, and it's pretty fucking realistic. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, my uncle... Like a Bronx tale? Yeah. My uncle Ronnie, okay, he was a fucking loudmouth fucking dude from the Bronx. Okay? Just straight up wop. <laughs> Pretty much. And he was just real loud and just real boisterous, you know. So anyway, he was in the hospital. I don't know for what reason. But he was there, as you know, back in the day, they'd keep you for two weeks, right. you know. <laughs> he was there for a while. And he was bitching and pissing and moaning about the food. Right. Just hated yeah, the I fucking food. I mean, it's food. hospital food. Yeah. I mean, hated the food. Oh, I'd and, rather have hospital food than jail food. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the last time I had to teach in a prison, the food was absolutely horrendous. <laughs> right. First time it wasn't as bad, but the second time was really bad. So anyway, um, so my uncle is in the hospital. He's bitching about the food. He's finally ready to come home. So my aunt, his wife, she cooks this full-blown Italian fucking smorgasbord, okay? Full-blown pasta, meat, I mean, the whole thing, okay? But the problem was is my Aunt Angela couldn't cook worth the fuck, <laughs> which is rare for an Italian woman not being able to cook because they can all cook their asses off. But she just could not, okay? So the other women in the family were trying to kind of help her out, you right. know, but she Little really wanted to make the dinner for Ronnie and all this kind of stuff. So... We sit down to eat this meal, and this is fucking big ass table. People fucking sitting all around it, passing the food around. And Uncle Ronnie's up there at the head of the table, and he's just kind of looking around. And you could tell he's like, like there's some like concern. Okay, like <laughs> you can see on his face something's about to go wrong. Despite the fact that he had been in the hospital for, I'm going to say a week. Yeah. Despite the fact that he'd been in the hospital for a week bitching and pissing and moaning about the food, he still looked like he was upset. <laughs> so yeah. everybody's just like waiting for him to say something. <laughs> right. And he's not going to be diplomatic about no, it. No, he's going to be forward. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, he's got his plate there and he's just like winding the spaghetti on the fork and everybody's just sitting there waiting. Because nobody wants to say a fucking word until he's eating something, you know? <laughs> he takes a big fucking bite and starts chewing it and has this, like, disgusted look on his face. And he spits it out on the plate. You know? <laughs> Get the and fuck he out. goes, this is fucking garbage. <laughs> <laughs> After mentioning about hospital. And my aunt's fucking crying, runs out of the room, and everybody else is just like, oh, damn, he just said this is garbage. <laughs> and spit it out on the plate. Like, god damn. You can't get much no, that, more fucking brutal than that. Yeah, that, that's pretty disrespectful so, yeah. to somebody's cooking, man. Yeah, your wife fucking makes this meal. You just got back from the hospital. This is garbage. This is fucking garbage. This <laughs> so yeah, so that's my that's my mayhem story. Good so uh, I ain't got nothing tonight. All right. Well, we uh, we got our fun killer cage oh, yeah. match. This is gonna be a good one. This is where we get uh, seventy five killers that we came up with. Seventy five objects that they could fight with. They're gonna fight to death in a steel cage with the objects and a variable. And we have our listeners provide random numbers so we know who's going to fight and what they're fighting with. Like, yes, so tonight, once again, we have uh, Courtney Hayes, L Linda, L <laughs> Laura Kovacs. LK. 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 Yeah, we'll go with LK. <laughs> and fucking uh, Rebecca Boomsocks. Hell Thank yeah. you, ladies. We appreciate y'all. Hell yeah. And Joey, we got one hell of a nasty matchup tonight. A couple of. Guys that are probably going to beat the fuck out of each other. What's the, what's the deal with this one? God, I just I just don't see how I can be PC about this one tonight at all. <laughs> uh, we got fucking William Devin Howell, yeah, the dude. sick ripper, and he's going up against fucking Kendall Francois, who loves to live with dead hookers in his family's home. That's right. 
So Kendall Francois from Poughkeepsie, De- William Devin Howell from Connecticut, so close to each close, other. Close, close. And uh, Chris, they got a couple of objects. Now, this is the first time that, this, this is, has ever happened. That, these are called, like as close yeah. weapons that we've ever had yes. out there. Yeah. So they got a gun that shoots boiling pus. Yeesh. And a gun that shoots high-pressured cum. <laughs> right. <laughs> So yeah, welcome so that, to the cum welcome zone. to the cum zone. <laughs> <laughs> and the variable, Joey. What about this one, man? Uh, it's Beavis and Butthead after they smoked an ounce of the diggity dang. Oh boy, <laughs> Beavis wow. and Butthead ain't doing shit. <laughs> so, so we got Sick Ripper William Devin Howell going up against the stinky bastard Kendall Francois in a cage with a gun that shoots boiling pus and a gun that shoots high pressure semen. And we got Beavis and Butthead after smoking an ounce of weed in the cage with them. Holy shit, Chris. What? How do you even start unraveling this one? Dude, I don't know. I've been looking at it, and I don't even know. I honestly don't know where to begin. <laughs> like, basically, like, they both like to fucking, like, just spray cum anyway. <laughs> like, they're both killing fucking bitches and fucking spraying cum everywhere. So one of them's going for that semen gun to fucking shoot the other with it, like yeah. So I feel like I mean, that, what's worse, the hot p- boiling pus or the high pressure semen? I mean, I mean, w- which would you prefer on your face? <laughs> I don't know. Neither, I guess. You know? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm saying, cause say, uh, be- Beavis and Butthead, they're already stupid. They just fucking smoking an ounce of the diggy. They don't even care about yeah, nothing, Yeah, I don't think dude. they're doing shit but like, watching. They, they just, they're just sitting back like, <clears throat> trying probably to fuck the dead hookers because they ain't moving anyway. And Beavis and Bud just be like, check out my wiener. <laughs> 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 fucking, I, I, I feel like, uh, like you said, Francois is a little bigger than fucking Howell, so he gets in there and he he gets that fucking that semen gun, that cum gun. Because he's got extra ammo sitting there waiting for him. Because he's got these dead bodies sitting there in the open, not buried. Fucking, he just starts blasting away with that all over fucking Hal. But Hal gets that pus gun. And and that might be the worst part. Because it's boiling. He fucking right. spray that in his fucking eyes. That's what I'm saying. You spray yeah. that in your face and eyes, you can't see shit. And yeah. so, like, he fucking takes that fucking boiling pus gun... Sprays him in the eyes, takes gets the gun from the the cum gun, shoves them both in fucking Francois's ass, pulls the trigger on both, and he just dies from a boiling explosion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Joey, what do you think, man? Man, I I've been oh thinking God, how I, I was gonna come at this one. I know. It's... I mean, physically, <laughs> it's a pretty decent matchup, but Francois yeah. is a lot taller, yeah, he's taller, yeah. bigger guy. And he stinks like hell, too, right. so I don't know how much you'd want to get up close and personal with Francois. So uh, this is what I think is going to happen. As soon as that fucking bell rings, yeah, <laughs> I'm sick, Ripper, <laughs> William Devin Hale in this motherfucker. Hey, Kendall Francois, you smell like shit. But I got two fifty in my pocket. I will give to you if you will make a badass music video with me, sick ripper. <laughs> hey, dog, I don't know about that. You gonna give me two fifty to be in your motherfucking video? That shit crazy, dog. I won't get back to my hookers, my dead hookers in my mama house, dead hooker in my mama house, Poughkeepsie tape. Yeah, no, 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 man, no, no, no. Take this money. I'm gonna give you some money. You gonna be in my video for sick Ripper? You can get the two fifty to the crackhead hoe before you take it to McDonald's. I'll show you how to do it. Shit, two fifty. I, I do it. I do it, man. What I gotta do, man? You gotta go strap yourself up against the cage. This shit gonna be raw. Be the some butthead. Come over here and check out video of Sick Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sick Ripper. He fucking sucks. Sick Ripper's the worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, be the some butthead. Sick Ripper. Got something for y'all to do. I need y'all to get those two guns over there. I need you to get those weapons and start 
spraying this motherfucker on the cage, Kendall Ooh. Francois. <laughs> we gonna give him a bath with cum and pus. Sit, rip Whoa, dog, whoa, dog. You ain't never said you gonna give me a bath, dog. My smell is natural. Do not do that to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this shit's cool now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told you, dumbass. And they just drowned wow. Kendall Francois in <laughs> semen and pus. Dude. Thank wow. you. Thank you for fucking making me laugh. Damn. <laughs> wow. Oh I, I don't even know what to say about that, Joey. That was really uh, <laughs> Holy shit, over the dude. top. That was great, dude. That was good. Good stuff. Holy so that's what shit. Killer Cage Match is about, man. It's oh, just, man. So, ladies, you picked a good one tonight, oh, and Joey Jesus was uh, in yeah, rare form. You, Joey always kills yeah. the Killer Cage Match, too, every stuff. time, dude. God right. damn it. <laughs> um, I've mentioned before, and I appreciate the uh, listeners that have been buying the book, uh, new book, Deeper Than Dead, I just wrote. Um, it came out in... Uh, on June 6th. Hell yeah. And I'm going to have some copies here at the uh, Dark History and Horror Convention. We've been talking about that, too. Um, August 19th, uh, Friday, August 19th, 4 to 8 p.m., and then Saturday, August 20th, uh, 10 to 7. It's at the I Hotel in Champaign, Illinois. And I'll link to their Facebook page where you can get tickets because they're selling tickets. They're cheaper online than if you get them at the event. Right. Always. They got a lot of stuff. They got actors, uh, authors, movie producers, several podcasts. Of course, we're going to be there. Yes, sir. And so come out, say hello, and we'll have some stuff. Uh, you know, the Murder Metal Mayhem shirts and the activity books. All your books. My stuff. books will be there. Artist Brian Usual is going to be there, which is really cool. We've never actually met. Uh, so this will be cool. I've been working with him for years, probably about 10 years. He's been doing art for me, but uh, this will be the first time I actually meet him. He's from Chicago. Um, so he's going to be there with us. Uh, so you can get your Deeper Than Book, Dead Book signed by both of us. Deeper if you're Than interested. Book. Hell yeah. If you want to buy it online, it's deeperthandead.com. You can order one online. Um, also, our YouTube channel, we've been talking about that. Uh, you could subscribe to it. Just released that laceration interview last yeah. Friday. So we got interviews up there. We got all kinds of cool shit. There's going to be a lot more content now that we're going to be doing the shows with Joey remotely. We're going to be doing uh, Zoom videos that we're going to release uh, on the YouTube channel. So there is a lot more YouTube activity going to be coming up. So go out there, subscribe. I link to that in the episode description as well. All you right. know what's going to be cool about when we do do the, the start do start doing the Zoom or whatever, and we're talking, yeah, and we're like, we're the three of us are physically talking about something, and one of us has something we're physically looking at, like the listeners will be able to look act, at it. Yeah, the listeners will be actually actually be able to see what we're looking at during the. Yeah, that's fucking true. Podcast. And the horn passing, right? the fucking Pop-Tarts, all that We're gonna stuff. We're going to have to figure yeah. out how to do a virtual horn pass. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll have some sitting there. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll be cool. That'll oh, be yeah. cool. <laughs> all right. Well, we have done plenty of mayhem tonight, guys, so it's time to hit the outro. <laughs> Oh, yeah, some Danish thrash there. The band Killing. Killing. Song Kill Everyone. So lovely. And definitely dig those guys. Did that interview with the drummer, Jesper. Just a cool fucking guy. Oh, yeah. And that's on the YouTube channel yeah. as well. So a lot of good shit out there on there. Uh, I want to say a big thanks to our friend Shane Borchuk for coming on with us tonight. Oh, yeah, dude. And for suggesting what a cool feature. Would have had no, no idea about this one. Yeah. So really, really good. It was always fun uh, to talk to him, and he does some great voices, as oh, you heard yeah. in the commercial. Oh, and dude, his fucking, that vo last voice he did for this episode was yeah, like, so Yeah, really, good. really good stuff. And uh, talking some poutine and eating poutine 
and just Canadian craziness. So Hell very, yeah. very fun. So thanks again, Shane. Uh, bumper music tonight, Joey? Votov killing and extermination dismemberment. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. And then Chris, what about that uh, metal segment intro? Motherfucking Chrysix. Hell yeah. Fuck and yeah. Murder Metal Mayhem intro by Low 12. Uh, don't forget to come out and see us at the Dark History and Horror Convention. Again, Friday, August 19th, Saturday, August 20th at the I Hotel in Champaign, Illinois. And go to that episode description. I got links. You can get tickets. They got some really good guests coming this time including jason london and jeremy london both of them yeah from dazed and confused and from mall Mall rats Rats. so they're going to do private movie screenings where you can watch the movie and they'll be in there and then do some q a afterward be a whole lot cooler if you did (laughs) (laughs) so yeah so it's going to be really good this year there's a lot of good there's a lot more than just those yeah yeah, there's shit there's a ton of people that are going to be there so definitely go check that out and we'll be there and we'll be selling our stuff and hanging out and talking to the listeners and i'm thinking about bringing cck with me this time um if we've got the room you know to set them up that'd be cool Motherfuckers are going to be like, what's that? Right. (laughs) Like, no, you don't understand. (laughs) That's right. Last year, I just couldn't bear to have it with me because it was right after he passed. It was the last one. Right. The day after he died was the last Dark History Convention. Holy shit, has it been that fucking long already? It was October, so he's having it sooner this year. So it hasn't been a year, but But it's since the last Dark History Convention, so... All right, well, thank you to everybody out there listening. We keep seeing those numbers and towns and just really cool to see, and we really do appreciate that. Fucking right, we do. And we want to say thanks and uh, got some good listener comments here. Chris, what about that first one? Well, yeah, we got uh, Colton Hills, bro, says, uh, I'm a new listener in Greek, and I love what I hear so far. I heard the Columbine episode you did, and I've been binging ever since. Oh yeah. So fucking right. Yeah. Seeing a big surge in that Columbine episode. It's number two most listened to episode yeah. we've ever done. Fucking nuts. And closing in on the first, which is the first episode, is number one. Which what we were talking about earlier, Columbine just that story will yeah. not story will not die. No, it yeah. really is not. All right, Joey, what about that second one? Downtown Donnie Brown commented <clears throat> You guys keep getting better each week. I'm amazed how many more people don't know about you yet, and hands down, my new favorite podcast. Fuck yeah. Thanks, Donnie. Yeah. That's thanks, cool. D- thanks, downtown. That's right. Uh, Kelsey Jane 44 commented, I work with a bunch of guys who love to play this podcast loud to piss people off. I think that's fucking great. That's fucking awesome. Uh, I think that's hilarious, or it's hilarious, but after listening to your episode on Jack Unterweger, I can see why they like it so much. So that's cool. All right. So were you one of the people that got pissed off and now you're into it? I'm not sure. But I hope you're Kelsey into let it. Kelsey, let us Fuck know. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Chris, what about the last one? Uh, says, uh, I'm a listener. Oh, sorry. Uh, Kenneth Still 661 <laughs> says, uh, I'm a listener in San Francisco and I love hearing you guys do lacer- loved hearing you guys do laceration. Those guys are fucking sick and deserve some metal love. Fucking right, dude. Hell yeah. Laceration killing it. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Kenneth. Appreciate that. And yes, I agree. Laceration was a good band to do. I had quite a few people uh, tell me they liked that. All right. We've been mentioning sickrickmasks.com. Um, go support what he's doing. The best masks out there. This week, we got our Venom black metal mask out on the table. Absolutely incredible detail. I mean, the work he does is unreal. He's always got new stuff coming up. He just put out the Jim Jones one. He's getting ready to do Eileen Warnos. I'm going to be talking to him on Saturday, uh, doing an interview with Rick Fisher. He's going to talk about his upcoming show with Macabre. Uh, He was actually at their practice today getting ready for this. Um, He uh, also has a new deal with Trick or Treat Studios going on. He wants to talk about the Jim Jones. He wants to talk about Eileen Warnos. And I'm just really excited. And I got a good question for him, like I do with the bands of, you know, who should die in your mosh pit. With him, it's who should die, who should be murdered by a serial killer. 
you know, A, B, or C. Yeah, yeah. So it's Justin Bieber, Kim Kardashian, or Fred Durst, and why. So I'm anxious to see what Rick says to that. So, yeah, so that'll be fun. Uh, And mentioned before, you could pick up my new book, Deeper Than Dead. DeeperThanDead.com is how you can do that. You can get it in color. You can get it in black and white. I got full-size posters. So uh, lots of good stuff with that. And the reader comments have been unbelievable. I've been getting emails and stuff almost every day from people that are telling me, man, like you hooked me in on the first part of this thing. And I read the whole book in like two or three days because I just really liked it. Uh, So that's awesome. I've already had people asking me when I'm doing the next one. I uh, want to know what happened to this character or how did so-and-so end up in Deeper Than Dead? And I'm like, I'm not really sure. I haven't written that part yet. So <laughs> so I appreciate that very, very much. So thank you guys for doing that. Uh, you could check out MurderMetalMayhem.com to listen to the past episodes. Joey, what about your distro? You're still doing I still got it. what you got, and yeah. we link to that in the episode yeah, description. Yeah, for sure. You can go to uh, FTA Records with a Z, or you can go to Goremonger, or you can hit me up through Murder Mill Mayhem, honestly, if you wanted to. Um, but, yeah, basically it's a, it, mostly all Goremonger shit that I got right now. But uh, <clears throat> since I'm moving and I was pulling out, like, all my stacks of CDs. Oh, shit. my God, I've so got, many I've got CDs. a good handful of multiples that I had duplicates of that I didn't realize or whatever. Right. So I'm going to fucking post all them up, too. But That's you can, cool. I mean, you can always hit me up for the Murder Mail Mayhem shit, too, Pete's books. You can hit me up for uh, uh, whatever distro I got in, the Gormonger shit. So, yeah, just hit me up. That's cool. That's cool. I'm going to be getting some new shit because <clears throat> I'm, I'm right. I do, like, a horror theme fucking album i got two full lengths out horror flicks one and two and i'm writing horror flicks three right now and uh i got some badass artwork for it from my buddy nev up in chicago and fucking for full terror when i play out there in september i'm gonna have some uh, short, that's the other artwork yeah, i was, some yeah, new shorts right. I was made trying to think of that shirts, the other day so. fuck yeah so Very cool. keep an eye out i'll post it on the uh murder Mile man pages too awesome uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've been talking about that. Got a lot more coming up on YouTube. Yeah, next couple, next month or so. Yeah, here within the more. next month, you're going to start seeing yeah. weekly content coming up there from the episodes as we record them live from doing the show. So that'll be available and something that you know, you've know you never seen. You've never seen us doing the podcast like on a weekly basis right. like that. Um, so check out the show on any podcast platform, leave comments and rate the show when you can, uh, support the show by going to that six, six, six club, patreon.com slash murder mental mayhem, just three bucks a month. And again, all this is in the episode description. Well, we can't let him go without hearing a karaoke song. This is another blast from the past. So crank this shit up, and until next time, keep one foot in the gutter. And keep your fists on the gun and get them all on the run. Eh? I know your eyes in the morning sun. I feel you touch me in the pouring rain In the moment that you wander far from me I want to feel you in my arms again And you come to me on a summer breeze Keep me warm in your love Then you softly leave And it's me you need to show How deep is your love? Your love Really? F-
fucking do And it's me you need to show How deep is your love? How deep is your love? How deep is your love? I really need to learn Cause we're living in a world of fools Breaking us down When they all should let us be